If Nebraska is a football factory, then it's a factory that manufactures runners, great runners. Like Heisman Trophy winner Mike Rozier, the Huskers factory this year has worked overtime to come up with not one, but two great running backs. The wee backs, if you will. Derek Brown scooted for more than a thousand yards last year. And when he runs out of gas, Calvin Jones will churn up the acreage. Jones set school records with 294 yards and six touchdowns in one game last season. Jones and Brown will try to restart their engines in 92 against the Utes of Utah. And it's coming up next on Prime Network. Welcome to the campus of the University of Nebraska in Lincoln for the Big 8 Conference Game of the Week. Today, from Memorial Stadium, the Nebraska Cornhuskers host the Utes of Utah. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Armstrong. Looking forward to another great season of Big 8 football, and all the experts agree that this could be the most competitive of all seasons, with four teams a real great shot to win the title, and the other four are going to be competitive as well. Working with us on the broadcast this year will be former Oklahoma quarterback Dean Blevins, and Dean, it's great to have you alongside. You. The question mark here in Lincoln, certainly not at running back, but at quarterback. Clearly the quarterback position where fifth-year quarterback Mike Grant comes in. He has a strong arm. He's big, strong, and fast. Really unproven, though. He must lead the Huskers to the promised land. The guy that has led the Utes of Utah to the promised land, at least for them, is Frank Dolce. Dolce has played very well. He's a smart quarterback in the classroom of 3.5 students, smarter yet on the football field, and he has an outstanding receiver to throw to, probably the best in the WAC conference. There he is, Brian Rowley. Great hands and great speed, number 19. Utah expecting to vie for that WAC title this year, but they have a tough first opponent, Nebraska. What do they have to do to win? Well, Ron McBride, the coach, told us yesterday they must be consistent against Nebraska they can have no letdowns he said they must play their game they cannot be intimidated here in Lincoln and he thinks the game will be won in the trenches it may not be good news news because Nebraska certainly can win in the trenches the Cornhuskers rarely lose a home opener so what are they looking for today coach Osborne said to win or to be a championship team you must play great defense the quarterback position they must find a quarterback find him maybe it'll be Grant and the kicking game it seems they always do very well in the special teams play well we know that this is a football factory here at Nebraska. Rarely do they make any changes, but one big change they've made this year is on the playing surface, a brand new turf here at Memorial Stadium. Bill Goldman is down on that turf. Give us a report, Bill. Dave, they couldn't have picked a better time to put this new state-of-the-art surface in. As much as an inch and a half of rain fell in Lincoln in the overnight, and there's a 40% chance of thunder showers that could hit here during the game. Both the coaches, though, say that they're equipped to deal with it. I, however, am not. And the field is not in too bad a shape right now. It's not very slick. The thing is, they used to water down the fields here in Lincoln to ensure safety and traction for the players. That may not be necessary today. Well, Bill, it'll take more than a thunder shower to keep these fans away for the 183rd straight time, a sellout here at Memorial Stadium. They're excited about football in Lincoln, and so are we. The Big A Game of the Week is coming up next on Prime Network. Welcome back to Nebraska for the 103rd year of college football and a nice day to greet these fans for another sellout crowd. Temperature of 81 degrees, high humidity. Partly cloudy skies right now. The wind could be a factor in this game. And uh, we are looking at some possible thunderstorms later on this afternoon. These teams have only met three times. Nebraska winning all three. The last time in 89, there's only one player left from Utah that played in that game. That's Brian Rowley, the wide receiver. And the Huskers have dominated the WAC conference. The head coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers now in his 20th year here in Lincoln. As far as head coaching duties are concerned is Tom Osborne, his 31st year at Nebraska overall. And the head coach of the Utah Utes is Ron McBride, who coaches now in his third year. Led him to a 7-5 and five record a year ago. That's their best finish in six years. And speaking of the number six, Nebraska has not won or not lost an opener in six straight years. They'll try to make it seven in a row against the Utes today. And Nebraska will receive to start things off. Back deep to get it for the Cornhuskers is Tyrone Hughes and Corey Dixon. And kicking off for the Utah Utes is Brian Alba. A freshman, they say he can really kick off very, very well. And Tyrone Hughes, one of the best return men in college football. 
Hughes and Dixon, numbers 33 and 2. They are uh, two of the four-man relay team that Nebraska had, the 4 by 100 in the Big 8 Conference, came in second. They can fly. Oh, they can. Well, one of the advantages for Utah, they'll be kicking with the wind at their back. Albo will try to kick it out of the end zone and not give either Hughes or Dixon a chance to run this one back. And the 92 season has begun. Hughes has it at his own eight. Big hole for Hughes. He slices up across the 25 to the 28-yard line. A quarterback for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, the fifth-year senior, Mike Grant. This is his time to prove he can be their guy, Dave. Mike Grant, a guy that for the third time has won the starting job. He redshirted a year ago, allowing Keith and McCant to come off that depth chart and do so well for Nebraska a year ago. First and ten for the Cornhuskers. The ball at their own 28-yard line. And the give is to Brown. Cuts back. Nothing doing. Back might have lost a yard. Big play by Errol Martin, the linebacker. For the Cornhuskers, Derek Brown, the man who just carried it. A great running back. Oh, no question about it. The best tandem in America. And a great front line for the Cornhuskers, led by Will Shields. Will Shields, a candidate for the Lombardi. As a matter of fact, a finalist for the Lombardi Award. Defensively for the Utes, up front, Luther Ellis. They really like his athletic ability. Well, number 83, a defensive end. Maybe the best to ever play at Utah before he's done. Only a sophomore. And Errol Martin just made that last tackle a good one. And Sharif Shaw can hit you from the backfield. He'll be in a lot of plays, number 33. Second and 11. The give again to Brown. Again, nothing doing. This time it's Preston Christensen who makes the stop. So that running attack for Nebraska, a team that has led the United States in rushing in seven of the last 12 years. Tough getting going so far. Pickup of only one on that, and it's third and 10. Well, I think a lot of people looked at this game on paper and said, uh, Utah, isn't this the team that was last in defense a couple of years ago? Yes, it is, or it was. It certainly isn't now. This is a much improved defensive club. And Ron McBride has done wonders with this Ute team. Chance for Grant to pass for the first time. Too low, pass intended for Tyrone Hughes, and it's incomplete, and three and out for the Cornhuskers. And the fans here who have been critical of Tom Osborne and his teams from time to time are on them early. Pretty demanding, aren't they? Yeah. Three downs, they're already booing, but I'm sure that things will turn around for Nebraska and they'll play well. But a fine start for Utah. We mentioned their defense. That will be the key to their season. Stiggy back to punt, and he's a dandy. Maybe the best in the conference, Dave. He might be. Stiggy, a four-year starter here at Nebraska, and Rowley, you saw him, number 19, back to get it for Utah. High snap, Stiggy gets it off, and boy, does he boom one. Rowley has to go all the way back to his own 15 to track it down. And now he's tackled at the six. Wow. Andre McDuffie got him a 63-yard punt. No return. The quarterback for the Utes of Utah is Frank Dolce, now in his senior campaign, the junior college transfer out of El Camino. He can throw in the pocket, probably throws better on the run. 6-1, 2 3 well, Right now, though, the Utes are backed up near their own end zone at the six-yard line. Dolce wants to throw from his own end zone. A little bit of pressure gets it off to Anderson at the one. He's brought back into the end zone. They'll mark it at the one. Nebraska wanted a safety, but they'll mark it at the one-yard line. Utah comes out chunking the football, and they go to the screen, a high percentage pass, but Nebraska sniffs it out. We'll watch it again. Dolce back in the end zone, and he'll come to his left, drop it off. Nebraska, tremendous defense. They want the safety. They don't get it, but they have it all the way back to the one. That's a good call. He was shoved back into the end zone, but at the one now for Utah. Not much doing for Anderson. Gets it back to the three. Well, Utah, if they can, will try to throw it a lot to Rowley today. Rowley, the best in the conference. He's a dandy. Only 5'10", 178. Has a chance, though, for an NFL career. The smallest front line led by Mike DeHogue at 285, the heaviest player. Second team all whack last year. Fine player, though, 284-pounder. Now third and 13 for Utah back on the three-yard line. The Utes need to get it up to the 16. And from the shotgun, Dolce. 
the quick hitter. It passes complete to Sean Williams, but he will not have the first down. He gets it only out to the 12. That just gave their punter some room to operate. It did do that, but if he uh, was would have been able to keep the, his feet, would have been okay and maybe picked up the first down, but Sean Williams unable to do that. And you see the defensive line, John Perella, they really like his talents. The, Travis Hill, one of the great linebackers in that linebacker tradition here, and Tyrone Bird, a four-year starter for Nebraska. They did the job there, three and out for the Utes, and punting now for Utah is uh, Steve Young, their senior punter. And he gets off a boomer as well. This one goes to Dixon, back at his own 32. Dixon, weaving around, gets it up to the 42-yard line. So we'll pause with 11.21 to go. The defense has dominated so far. We're scoreless in the first quarter. Nebraska with it at their own 43-yard line. And the give is to the fullback. Lewis, he's wide open. Lewis may go all the way. Lewis, touchdown. Wow. Get your rushing attack kick started in a hurry. You bet. Lance Lewis, a three-year starter, and after a couple of unsuccessful running plays in the first series, Nebraska comes back, bams it up the middle. Utah had a chance to stop him at the line of scrimmage. Lewis breaks the tackle and goes the distance. That's the longest run in his career, a 57-yarder for the touchdown. Bennett tacks on the point after, and just like that, Nebraska has a 7-0 lead. Wow, what a turnaround in this game. And we'll take a look at it from the end zone. Right up the gut, straight handoff up the middle. A chance to be stopped, pretty good position. Utah had the play defended fairly well, but Lewis breaks the tackle, and he will go the distance. And Ron McBride mentioned one of the keys was consistent play, not giving up a big one. And although they played very well defensively the first series, obviously they let that one go. Lewis showing good speed from the fullback position. Watch Will Shields, number 75, All-American candidate. Jim Scott, number 51, an outstanding center. The Big Eight's finest offensive line, most would agree. One of the finest in the country year in, year out. Tom Osborne says it may be one of his best of all time. That's saying something You here. bet it is. They've won seven of the last 12 NCAA rushing titles. Granted, they have wonderful backs, but to do that, to, to have those type, type of numbers, Dave, you've got to have outstanding people up front, and Nebraska does year in, year out. And Nebraska, what a turnaround for them. The first two times they rushed the ball, they really gained no yardage at all. And then for Lewis to take that, what you try to get two or three yards on a fullback dive like that, and they go 57 yards for the touchdown. Terrific stuff from Nebraska to lead 7-0 with 11-11 to go here in the first quarter. Well, kicking off now for Nebraska will be Byron Bennett, and back deep to get it is Keith Williams and Brian Rowley. And the Huskers don't lose much here in Lincoln with Tom Osborne as their head coach. And we'll have an interesting visit with Osborne at halftime. He talks a lot about the fans here in Lincoln. He talks, too, about some of the restrictions now placed on the coaches by the NCAA and the presidents. Uh, kind of a wide-ranging conversation with Tom Osborne. And we'll have that at halftime for you today. Tom had an interesting comment saying that uh, the Big 8 Coach of the Year, anytime you go for Coach of the Year, usually you look for teams that improve a lot. It's hard for him to be a national or a, or a, a conference Coach of the Year because you always expect Nebraska to be up there. Williams takes it at his 12, following some blockers across the 20 to the 22-yard line, but that's about it. In on the stop is Steve Carmer and Corey Schlesinger. And you see Nebraska, that scoring drive, Dean. <laughs> Not much of a drive. One play. Took him 10 seconds to go 57 yards. Well, you know, he zigzagged a little. Had the shoulder pads yeah, on. Right. He's faster than that. Right. Uh, yeah. the, the players are kidding. It took you 10 yeah. seconds to go 57 yards. Well, let's see if the Utes can now come back. Better field position, certainly, for Utah. 
Defensive coordinator Charlie McBride likes to bring the linebackers up. Watch Nebraska. They'll try to disrupt the quarterback all afternoon. They do, do not blitz him. Say with a quick drop to Rowley, drops it. Incomplete. Great Second coverage. Ten. Pardon me. Great coverage in the flat outside linebacker Travis Hill, 93 on the coverage. And to the sidelines we go to Bill Dolman. Dave and Dean, the uh, Utah youths were pretty sky high after that first Nebraska series, but they came off the uh, off the field doubting themselves. But they say Nebraska can't handle them. They just have to be sure about their tackles. They're down 7 nothing. They need to do something. Yeah, they do. And we'll see if they can do it offensively here, Bill. Second and 10 from their own 23. The Utes have gone nowhere offensively so far. One back, four splits. O'Shea given time. Quick hitter to Williams. Williams gets it across, a fumble on the play, and now Nebraska saying they have the football. And they do. Trev Alberts picks it up, and the Cornhusker machine is turning now. Things have certainly turned around the last couple of plays. Frank Dolce gets fine protection from his offensive line, drops it off over the middle, and it appears to be a nice pickup. But Nebraska, nice tackle, and they pick up the big turnover. Utah digging themselves a hole very quickly here. Now Nebraska in great field position at the Utah 33-yard line. Brown, the lone setback with it, cuts it back into the middle, down to the 31. Ball by number 21, Terry Brown. Nebraska will line up in lots of different sets. That's one, as you mentioned, with only the one long, with with the lone run back, one the <laughs> the one running back that time. Yes, uh, they will. They'll come at you in so many different ways. A lot of uh, fans want Nebraska to throw it more. My question is why? When you have Brown and Jones in your backfield, <laughs> play to your strength. And now Lewis, who can run 57 yards mm -hmm. for a touchdown, you go to your strengths, don't you? Here comes Grant in the option out to. Brown, he's got enough for the first down, it looks like, inside the 25, down to the 24. Might be just shy of that first down marker. Mark Swanson, the free safety, had to make the stop. Nice job of execution on the option play. Grant goes left, tight end. William Washington, the finest blocker in the conference at tight end, does a nice job and a good pitch off of the pitch man. Perfect execution, pickup of a little over nine. You ran some option at Oklahoma. What are you looking for there on the pitch? You're looking to find the pitch man and then to make the right decision. Grant was perfect there. Third down and a short one to go. Grant almost fell over. Brown did, and I don't know if he'll have the first down. Just depends on where they spot it. Looked like Grant got tangled up with his center, Jim Scott, on the exchange. Yeah, he gets stepped on. I think when Scott takes off the center, Number 51, his right foot actually catches Grant, and almost, Grant almost should have held on to that ball. He could have fumbled right here. Nice athletic play just to get the handoff completed. And it's a fourth down. Now they mark it right at the 25, a loss of about a half yard on that last play. And Nebraska's going to go for it on fourth and two. Power set. Grant will throw. Fourth down, into the end zone, Washington, no, incomplete. He was wide open, and Washington could not hang on. You gotta love the play call, though. Fourth and one, no one in the stadium expected Tom Osborne, the offensive coordinator, along with being head coach, to make the call. Grant comes around, and the tight end, as Nebraska did all last year with Johnny Mitchell, they go to the tight end for the big play. Washington behind the, sec behind the secondary. Grant throws a strike, but he drops it. Washington having to take the place of Johnny Mitchell, who you mentioned, who went out early. Washington, a starter for much of last year, but a guy that really is more of a blocker than a catcher. Williams with it, not much doing, a couple of yards around the near side. Picks up about two on the play. The tackle by 92, John Morella. Clock rolling, 8.50 to go in the first quarter with Nebraska leading 7 nothing. Boy, that play call is everyone stunned. This place is silent right now. And fourth and two, Nebraska throws it. Now oh, you got to love that. Utah comes in expecting to throw the ball around 25 times today. Throw on a Williams. I tell you, not 
fighting that was Ed Stewart. He was right there. So was Anderson. Ed Stewart there was a good look at him. Only 6 feet, 205, a very speedy, obviously a smallish linebacker. Watching number 32, he comes into the picture very quickly. The smallest inside linebacker to start at Nebraska since Lee Kuntz back in 1974. Hmm. He can run, though. From the shotgun, Dolce. Here comes the blitz. He reads it and gets it off to Rowley, and there's a penalty flag now. Cornhuskers always known for their big guys up front. And the Utah Utes do not come in very big at all. In fact, uh, the Utes averaging, as you see right now, up front offensively, 271. It's rare that a defensive line outweighs the offensive line. That's exactly right. And you look at it the other way, almost uh, 30 pounds per man when Nebraska goes on offense. Illegal procedure. Offense. Penalty is refused. Fourth down. Steve Usachek, our official today, and Steve Young to punt it away again for Utah and back to get it. And two guys, Corey Dixon and Tyrone Hughes. They're waiting back at their own 23-yard line. Utah has struggled offensively so far, pinned back near their own end zone, and the interception, or actually the fumble, and then uh, Pierce three and out again. Not a good kick this time from Young, but it will take a Utah bounce. Will it ever? Well, you'd like to down catch it at the that. 31. You'd like to catch it. Tyron Hughes unable, though, to come up. It was such a short punt. So with 7.29 to go here in the first quarter, we're going to step aside with Nebraska leading 7 to nothing. Welcome back to the beautiful campus of the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. Lewis runs it again, this time not as much as that first 57-yard run. McBride's got to try to figure out something now offensively, Dean. The Utes have gone nowhere. Well, he's recruited skilled athletes at all position positions, Dave. People talking about how this club has really improved. They're a legitimate bowl contender this year. Mm -hmm. and he used it at Utah in the past. They've only recruited skilled athletes, but they're recruiting athletes at all positions. He's done an outstanding job, no question. They think they're going to buy with BYU for that yeah, whack title exactly. this year. Game four by Lewis. It's second and six. On the option, Brown again. Nice pitch to Brown with some room to run outside. Brown still on his feet, out of bounds at the 49 of Utah. Take a look at it from the end zone and watch number 45, Errol Martin in the white. He comes down on Grant. Perfect job again by Grant in executing perfect pitch out. Good timing, and uh, Nebraska can run that play with the best of them. Now here comes Nebraska again. You see Derek Brown. He's starting to tack up some yards, and so is Nebraska. Here comes Brown again. Good blocking. Brown weaving his way through for another first down. Luther Ellis finally makes the stop there. Zach Wieger with an outstanding block from his right tackle position. That time the Utes in essentially a 6-1 look. And watch number 72, Zach Wieger, the right tackle, comes around. Nice block right there. Is able to give Brown, and Brown uh, with a little juju juice there is able to <laughs> shake it loose, and uh, he can make it happen, can he? <laughs> juju juice, Well, huh? what, I don't know what you call it, but he can, he can smoke. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Here comes Brown again. He just pulls over Blaine Berger. Put a little mustard on that, on that burger. He did do that. I had an unnamed source before the game that a, a Nebraska writer say that Derek Brown is a legitimate Heisman contender, but he's not as good as Calvin Jones, the backup. Isn't that something? <laughs> well, his first two carries went for zero yards. He's picked it up since then. His last six carries for those 40 yards. Audubon is checking off. He wants to throw it. 
does successfully to Dixon. Dixon looks like a pinball. Bouncing around in there, gets it down to around the 26-yard line. Ed Miller was in on the stop for Utah. Nice job by Grant, though, coming to the line of scrimmage. They will audible around 40% of the time at home. He does a nice job here, sees something in the secondary that he likes, checks off, drops it to Corey, to, uh, Corey Dixon who picks up the first. Dean, you mentioned they'll audible more at home. Why is that? Well, the crowd noise. Uh, the crowd keeps it calm. The quarterback can, con can control the crowd noise in its own backyard. On the road, they are not able to do that as much. It's good enough for a first down by Dixon. First and 10 now from the 26 of Utah. You see a lot of two tights out of Nebraska. You see that here. On the option, here they come again. Again, it's Brown. They lose the tackle. actually had that play defended very well. Mm -hmm. As we take a replay, when we take a look at a replay in a moment, take a look at strong safety number 33, Sharif Shaw, as he will be in position, but that guy was outstanding as Brown is able to break that tackle. And that's two times the Huskers have broken tackles when they were stopped for no gain to go on in for touchdowns. That's right, Lewis before for 57 yards that time. That was the touchdown run for Derek Brown, and the extra point is good, but hold everything. There's a flag on the play. Might have to do it again. Yep. Nebraska's going to have to kick this one again. Nebraska with two long runs. This one from Derek Brown. Take a look at 33. They're on the left side of your screen. He's in great position, the strong safety, to make the tackle. But Derek Brown, that's why we say he's a Heisman tight player, breaks the tackle, avoids another track tackle by Swanson, the free safety, into the end zone. Well, he avoided the entire backfield, didn't he? First, Sharif Shaw, the man they call the sheriff, and then he got his deputy, Mark Swanson. <laughs> <laughs> You, you could say sloppy tackling, but Brown has made a lot of players miss him throughout the years. Yeah, he makes a lot of guys look bad. Now, that'll be on some Heisman Trophy reels, won't it? Bennett from a little bit further out. The point after is still good. Then Nebraska tacks on another rushing touchdown. Eric Brown had 14 rushing touchdowns last year. His first of 92 to make it 14-0 Nebraska. Welcome back to Cornhusker land and Nebraska is up on top 14 nothing thanks to this 26 yard touchdown run from Derek Brown reverse out by Grant pitches off the right man and uh, Brown does the rest rest by the strong safety Shaw there then he breaks the tackle by Swanson the free safety actually just sort of hurdles him and uh, goes into the end zone. Great possession, great series that time for Brown. Good feeling for a quarterback when you can pitch to a guy like Brown, <laughs> huh? Yeah, or, or his uh, backup, yeah. Calvin Jones. They are interchangeable parts, but so far it's been Brown. And Nebraska will kick off again. Bennett doing the chores with Roley and Williams back deep to get it, kicking into the win, and Roley will have it at the eight. Rolly across the 20 to the 23-yard line. Nebraska fishing again. On a little over two minutes, 69 yards in six plays, and Brown with the 26-yard touchdown run. Brown had most of them, and uh, you mentioned that you want to turn around and pitch it to Brown. Quarterbacks must, though, execute. You, you must continue. to. You have to pitch off the right man. If he's not there, you have to turn it up and run. You do like uh, when you have to pitch it to, for guys like Brown to be there. You change your game plan any now if you're Utah down 14 nothing. Not early? yet. Can't do it. you got to stick to the game plan. I agree. And you see Utah has not been able to do anything on the ground. In Nebraska, they just keep cranking them out. Dolce back to throw. Wide open is Anderson. Anderson gets out to the flat. To the 29-yard line, Mike Hines stopped him there. That time, number 19, Brian Rowley, the split end we keep talking about, was in motion. It, he gave a little softer corner that time, and Dolce was able to get a ball dropped off out into the flat. Nice pickup is Anderson. 
He's a big player. They originally listed him when the first notes I got, 6'3", 265. Mm. Last notes I got, he was 6'1", 235. That camp they had must have been pretty tough. <laughs> he even got two inches shorter. <laughs> That's right. By the end of the season, he'll be 5'6", 190. <laughs> Joel Shea wishes he were a little bigger. Joel Shea is hit by Travis Hill, a quarterback sack for Nebraska. Nebraska looking to improve its rush. And uh, Perella, as good as they've had, number 92, watch him come in. Noonan, 73. Lure, 70. Get a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Actually, this is a vastly improved offensive line for Utah. You don't see it there, though. An offensive line that's pretty much remained intact. They've moved Lance Scott into the center position, but all 11 of the offensive starters return on this Utah team. But so far, it's been Nebraska's defense that's been dominant. And Doche, you saw the numbers, 4 of 5, yet he's behind 14-0. Now on third and five, he'll have to throw again. Doche dancing around. Goodbye, Doche. Hill with his second straight QB sack. Correctly called, Dave. Watch the feet of Doche. Gets a little happy feet. He knows pressure has come on him early. And 93, Travis Hill, an overlooked, maybe an underrated outside linebacker, again makes the play. But happy feet that time by the quarterback, Doche. Happy feet, not a good thing not for a quarterback. No, a little concerned with the, the heat, the pressure coming at you. you it's easy when they're 6'5 and 250 and faster than you are. <laughs> That's right. Young to punt for the third time. He cracked a good one there early. And again, off the side of his foot, this one's going out of bounds. Not a good punt at all that time by the punter, Steve Young. And the pressure may be starting to mount on the Utes just a little bit. That one will be marked right at midfield at the 50-yard line. That's just a 31-yard punt from Young. on the field. 301 left to go in the first quarter with Nebraska and Mike Grant in front, 14 to nothing. Next weekend on Prime's Tough Turf Saturday, Colorado faces the Baylor Bears at 1 o'clock or NC State meets Maryland at noon. So check your local listings for the game in your area. When you look at uh, Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator here at Nebraska. He's been around for a long time, and he's got to love the way his defense is playing. Uh, Charlie McBride's a dandy, a, a guy that uh, will tell you what he thinks, very well spoken, and he has coached some outstanding players here at Nebraska. Bill Dolman has something for us on the sidelines. Dean, you were just talking about the fact that Utah may be feeling some pressure. Well, it's pressure that Nebraska is going to keep putting on the Utes. Just over there in the Nebraska huddle after the touchdown, Coach Tom Osborne met with his first offensive unit and said, these guys can score in a hurry, so you guys do the same. So let's just keep it on them, keep it on them, keep it on them. And that's what it is right now, 14-0. It sure is, 14-0, and they're looking for blood right now. Osborne, who serves not only as the head coach, but as the offensive coordinator. Brown goes in motion. And the give is to Vincent Hawkins. Hawkins with a hole. Hawkins busted outside. And one man to beat, that was Ed Miller, who forced him out of bounds at the 35-yard line, a 15-yard pickup. You see the counter trap a lot. That's a staple of this offense. Watch 72, Zach Weger comes around, outstanding blocking, and uh, you, know, you get about eight yards before anybody touches you. You can rack up some numbers. First and 10 from the 35. Grant wants to throw wide open to Dixon. Did he drop it? No, incomplete. They're going to cool call that one incomplete. Dixon had it and then dropped it. Dixon has such outstanding speed. Only 5'8", 155-pound junior, but he has such outstanding speed, the cornerbacks have to sit off of him a lot. Therefore, he'll be able to catch a lot of those little stop routes, 5- to 10-yard type routes. Got to concentrate, got to watch the ball in, then run with it. That time, he wasn't able to do so. Grant, obviously, though, has a strong arm. Only one of four for seven yards, but he has a strong arm. That's not the problem. He only had that one dropped, and he had the and touchdown the, run uh, to Washington that was dropped, the would-be touchdown. So he really could be three of four. And the give again is to Brown, who weaves his way inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line before Christensen could stop him. And Derek Brown starting to rack up the yards on the ground. We still haven't seen Calvin Jones. Sprint draw to Derek Brown out of La Habra, California. He was a non-qualifier in 89, but uh, he is 
picked it up in the classroom, and uh, his, his, his skills have all have never been questioned on the football field. Over 1,300 yards in rushing last year did Brown. Third and three. And again, it's Lewis. Again, finding the lots of room inside, and Lewis is really running hard in there. Lewis gets it down to the 17-yard line. Calvin Jones wanting his chance, number 44. He'll get it before the day, but you know your offensive line is strong. When it's third and three, what do you do? You just line up and hammer at them, just assault them. Hmm. It's always been sort of a joke around the Big 8. Everyone knows Nebraska's plays. They just can't stop them. <laughs> they just keep turning up those yards on the ground. First and 10 from the 17. Now Grant wants to go up top. Does. And again, he has a pass drop. This time by Hughes. That's right on target. Can't fault Grant for that. Perfect job by every unit. In offense, it's a precision art. All 11 men have to function. They have to execute. Here, 10 players do their jobs, but the 11th drops it in the flat. Perfect strike again by Mike Grant. Now Grant again. He's only one for five now and should be four for five. Only one pass of his that was not catchable. Second and ten, still at the 17. Derek Brown, the lone setback. And the pitch back to Brown. Cuts it inside, cuts another time. And gets it down to the 11-yard line. And Swanson that time would not let him hurdle over it. Straight option, and again, Utah forcing the pitch. I would think later in the ball game, they would go ahead and play the pitch, but watch the coming at Grant, forces the pitch, ball goes back to Brown, and that's perfect execution, picks up nice yardage. I expect later that you'll see the defensive linebackers uh, and defensive ends play the pitch and force the run a little more. Yeah, he's already got 80 yards. He has something Brown does against the state of Utah. <laughs> Last year against Utah State, he ran for 175 yards. Now against Utah, already 80 yards. Third and four. The give is to Brown. Ooh, almost got into the end zone again. A flag is down. Sam Rhodes tripped up Brown at the five-yard line. But let's see what the flag is about. Again, it's going against Nebraska. So forget about that run. It's going to be third and nine instead. The previous series, third and three, Turner Gill were on the sideline. Of course, the former Nebraska great quarterback. There's mm -hmm. Tom Osborne. We talked about him being his own offensive coordinator. Not many head coaches do that. Bobby Bowden uh, does a lot of that down at Florida State. Future. Offense, not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty. That's the second illegal procedure against Nebraska. I guess that's to be expected in a first game. It is, and uh, when we were up visiting with Coach Osborne yesterday, that was one of his concerns. Apprehension. The, the players being a little uptight in the first game need to get in sync. Okay, look at that. 166 to minus six. Third and nine now. Grant has to roll out. Grant has a lot of room to run. Another flag is down. Grant goes into the touchdown, into the end zone, that is, for a touchdown. Untouched, but again, we may be calling this one back. The crowd sure thinks they are. Yeah, they are not cheering. Looks like there was something on the... No, Whoa. it's against Utah. Well, the crowd felt that way. We felt that way. I got the feeling that even Mike Grant, as he scampered into the end zone, was sort of doing it half speed, but he got in there, and it counts. Well, I'm sure that fellow thought something was up as well. Good job here on the corner. The official still conferring about it. The umpire, Dean Reimer. The referee, Steve Juszczyk. Now they're going to talk it over with Mike Grant. Illegal participation. Defense. Decline. Touchdown. Now you'll hear the delayed cheer. We'll watch it again. On third and seven, they wanted to get Grant on the corner with a pass run option. He decides to tuck it early as he gets a good block on the corner and easily gets into the end zone. Third rushing touchdown for Nebraska. And Bennett will put on the exclamation point. He does, and it's 21 to nothing. Nebraska after the first quarter of play. And we're still at 47 seconds on the clock here in the first stanza. Nebraska with Grant. He tucked this one under in a hurry, Dean. He knew that it was wide open for him. 
Here he is rolling right, fakes back to the to the left. He gets on the corner with no problem whatsoever. Utah out of position in the secondary. They've come up with no support at all. Free safety out of position, and Grant uh, easily skates in. Watch it from the ground level position. Sharif Shaw, number 33, beaten again, and he was uh, a key coming in for Utah if they were to contain this explosive Nebraska attack. There you see Shaw, 33. Well, the sheriff right now is going to lose his badge the way things are going for Utah. 21 nothing for this Cornhusker offense, and I think some of the questions are starting to be answered about this guy, Mike Grant. Grant stayed around this summer, Dave. He has uh, typically gone home to Tampa, Florida in the summer. He, along with uh, 75 or 80 of the top Nebraska players were around, and worked out very diligently both in the weight room. They had a little passing league, which is similar to a flag football league, for an hour and a half every day, and uh, it's paying off for him. Not exactly a strong vote of confidence by Osborne. He says something like sometimes he loses and his concentration has lapses. Quarterback situation here is still a concern. Overall, he's done pretty well, but I mean, not an overwhelming vote of confidence in his quarterback, but maybe after maybe. today, that'll change. And maybe that's his way of challenging him. To the end zone, Utah will start on their own 20. And again, Nebraska chews up half the field in a little over two minutes. Grant takes it in from the 16. A 57-yard run for a touchdown, a 26-yard run for a touchdown, and now that 16-yarder by Mike Grant. And Ron McBride losing Ooh. more hair. <laughs> Let's and the Utes they... stopped him on the first series. Perfect start for them. It sure did. Three and out for Nebraska in that first series. And the give is to Anderson, who pulls it ahead for just a couple of yards. Dolce, even though he's had a high completion percentage, he's not chewing up a lot of yards, and he's been sacked a few times. Well, that, that average, it's a little over four yards per completion. Charlie McBride and his Nebraska defense will uh, give up that type of yardage. Absolutely. Does he throw it shorter because he's not given the time? Yeah, and that's the theory of the Nebraska defense now. They put so much pressure on you, they're going to make you make a quick decision. Most of the time, it'll make a, the completions be short. Second and eight. Anderson goes in motion. They'll say this time, given some protection. Now, the coverage must have been great because David White had a chance to get inside and make the stop. Been great pass rush today by Nebraska. David White's really the swing man. He can play either side as outside linebacker, and this is a very strong position here in Nebraska. Travis Hill, Trev Alberts are outstanding players. David White, he can play 6'2", 250. Well, they've had some good uh, mm. linebackers here, haven't they? Guys like Broderick Thomas and Mike Kroll. And the list goes on, and the beat goes on for Nebraska. The Huskers with three rushing touchdowns in the first quarter. Lead after the first 15 minutes of play. 21-0 over the Utes of Utah. And welcome back to Lincoln, Nebraska. The home of Cornhusker football in Memorial Stadium. Beautiful old stadium. And as we mentioned, for the 183rd time, this place is filled with red. Sports Illustrated voted the uh, fans here at Nebraska the best in college football. Mm -hmm. Can't argue with that at all. Third down, nine yards to go now for the Utes as we start the second quarter. Utah yet to pick up a first down. They'll try it here. Dolce has it batted down. They still won't have a first down. John Perella got his mid up on it. And Perella's going wild. John Perella, perhaps one of the top linemen ever at Nebraska. McBride, the defensive coordinator, says one of the top three in his 16 years mm. here at Nebraska. Now watch Mike Anderson. He comes this time, 48. He's been threatening. This time the inside linebacker comes. Dolce gets the pressure. And the tipped ball goes up. Perella got his hands on it. Young back to punt again. And back deep to get it is Tyrone Hughes. This time just one guy back. Maybe Nebraska's going to come after this one. Yes. Here they come. 
They don't get to him. A line drive kick to Hughes at his own 45. What a run back by Hughes! Wow! He had a guy zeroing in on him when he caught the ball, and Hughes held on to it and then took it all the way up to the Utah 41. Well, you don't have to be a mathematical whiz to figure out if you have 10 guys rushing, rushing you're not going to have many blocking for the guy back. Outstanding job by Hughes. Tom Osborne always excels in the kicking game. Well, he mentioned uh, that he wanted those special teams to do well. And oh, yeah. They have so far. And uh, on the other hand, McBride, the coach from Utah, says he has to win in the trenches. His team not winning at all. No first down. Nebraska dominating on both sides of the ball. First and ten, Nebraska. Now the first look at Calvin Jones. And he picks up one on his first carry of 92. I'll never forget that game at Kansas last year when Brown got hurt. Jones came in and rushed for 294 yards and six touchdowns. He yeah, they were behind 17-zip, uh, were they not? And mm -hmm. uh, I read a quote where he didn't really even want to go in. <laughs> he goes in, and after that game, he says his uh, confidence soared. And he said after that, he didn't want to come out. <laughs> <laughs> he and Brown actually get along very well. There's no friction between the two. And they say it really works well to have two. That way we don't get tired or beat up. Grant to throw it again, wide open as Muhammad. He hangs on to it, and he gets it down to the 26-yard line. Mark Swanson makes the stop, but wide open was Abdul Muhammad. Abdul Muhammad, number 27, second team wingback, although he'll play a lot, and they'll go to him when they need a big play. Played a lot as a true freshman. He's across the middle. Grant again on the numbers. And this time, Muhammad says... Uh, Go it my way. I'll catch it, Mike. Yeah. Muhammad, they say he runs his pass routes like Magic Johnson runs a basketball court. His head is always up, looking to the open spot. Jones goes in motion. Grant wants to throw it again, tucks it under. Grant scoops down the sidelines, cuts it in and out of bounds for Grant at the six-yard line. Edwin Garrett forced him out there, but Nebraska is doing anything they want on offense right now. And here's a look at exactly why they are doing that. Watch the blocking of the line. We mentioned earlier, best in the Big 8 Conference, maybe the best in the country. A great job there getting some blocking from the backfield as well. Andre McDuffie, a backup with a nice block. Ran able to throw it and run it this afternoon, 35 yards. Nice job, though. He's uh, making the right decisions on the corner, Dave. Sure is. First and goal from the six. Touchdown, McDuffie! So Andre is rewarded for his block with the touchdown. And Nebraska has rolled to a 27-0 lead. All of their touchdowns coming on the ground. And they're making it look easy. Well, Utah is just... Uh wondered what hit them. I mean, they're saying, is this the same uh, game? Didn't we hold Nebraska the first series, get the ball back, and now it's 27, about to be 28 to nothing, just starting the second quarter. Nebraska can do that, too. Bended on, busy man for the Huskers so far. That's his fourth straight point after. And it is 28-0 Nebraska. And we still have 13-34 to go in the second quarter. Nebraska, after being stopped three and out on that opening drive, have had things going their way. Andre, Andre McDuffie taking it in from the six for that touchdown. And it's 28-0 Huskers. Let's take another look at that touchdown run by number seven. And watch what happens in the offensive line. We have Chris Zizda, number 64, in replacing Malin, the starter at left guard. He does an outstanding job, and basically the Huskers go in untouched. McDuffie for the touchdown. Out of Eulis, Texas. Now Bill Dolman was down in that Utah huddle. That's uh, got to be a rough place to be, Bill. It's not a happy bench down here on the Utah sidelines. After that last punt that Utah had, Ron McBride came over to his offensive unit and, and gave a pep talk that would make Spike Lee proud. He said, fellas, just do the right thing. That was before Andre McDuffie found the end zone. Now they're down 28 nothing. I wonder what he's going to pull out next. Back to you. Maybe he'll say it's the shoes. <laughs> the shoes. Shoes are black these days in college football for the most part, aren't they? Yeah. We went through that white phase, and now they're back to black. Huh? And McBride, probably right now, looking for the fastest plane out of Lincoln. Cornhuskers 
28 to nothing now over the Utes. Uh, he's thinking about the rest of the season as well and hopes to not walk out of Lincoln demoralized. He was talking bold before this game. Worley will down it, and Utah will start at their own 20. And again, Huskers don't take much time to score on you either. No, they don't. You think of teams blitzing you, and you think of teams throwing, uh, having to throw the football to do it. But Nebraska gets you out of position, uh, and they can they can hurt you on the ground. They can run the numbers up quickly. Four plays, 40 yards, a minute 12, and McDuffie goes in from six. Now, Dean, I asked you earlier if uh, Utah needs to change their game plan. Actually, their game plan is passing, so trying to come from behind. That's certainly uh, their forte. They've got to try to do it now, but they've not been able to get enough time for this guy, Frank Dolce. That time they do. But great coverage on Henry Lusk. Lusk was covered like a blanket in there by Mike Anderson, the linebacker. Anderson always comes on strong in the big games, had 12 tackles against both Washington and OU last year, 11 tackles against Colorado, and also against Miami in the Orange Bowl. Well, he replaces a great inside linebacker, Mike Petko, an NFL draftee. He moves uh, from the strong side over to the inside linebacker position. Huskers defense also lost Tyrone Leggett and Curtis Cotton from their backfield, but Tom Osborne thinks it's the strongest defense he's had in a while. Pairs it with the early 80s defense. That pass overthrown and incomplete. A little extracurricular activity going on there. Lusk not happy with the coverage. And Dolce having a rough time trying to come up with some time to throw it and just then a, finding his target. It's just a nightmare for Dolce right now. He is uh, having no time. Now, if he gets in a situation where he knows that uh, he has to pass, Nebraska knows he has to pass, they can really tee off on him. And, It'll make it even worse. And Utah team known for passing, averaged 234 yards through the air last year, tied with Nebraska in that category today. A quick hitter. That pass is completed to Hooks, who's still on his feet across the 40, up to the 42-yard line. Good play from Greg Hooks and Dolce, and the quick hitter, and Hooks made it work. That time, Nebraska with five defensive backs, and Hooks will come underneath. Dolce with a nice little drop-off pass, and Hooks able to make the most of it and uh, gets into the open field. First time this afternoon, Utah has been in the open field. That's the only time they've had daylight, isn't it? Dolce hands it off, and he runs into that big red line to Anderson. Push him way back. And a pick up about three on the carry. And give us to Williams. Williams was the ball carrier, not Anderson, number 20. Williams, who rushed for over 1,000 yards last year. K Dub is the nickname. He is known for making, uh, breaking a lot of tackles and uh, long gainers. Haven't seen that out of him today. The high school wrestler, number 20 in white. Second and six, ball to 47. Best field position for Utah. O'Shea just throws it up, and going up to get it is Hooks. Hooks all of a sudden the favorite receiver of Joel Shea, and he gets it down to the 27-yard line is Hooks. Watch Hooks, he's 6'2", number two on the sideline. Dolce throws it up and it's a jumping match. Kenny Wilhite, the left cornerback, only 5'8", so you have a four-inch height differential. Great vertical leap by Hooks, and a nice play by Deshea. Man, that thing was up in the air. The hang time on that ball was something else. Rowley goes in motion. Dolce again. Fires across the middle. Pass caught by Lusk. And he gets it down to the 12-yard line. Now here comes Utah. Their offense starting to crank it up to another notch. Gaining a little confidence, throwing on timing that time. So it's first and ten now. The ball down to the 12-yard line. Now there's a penalty flag down. Wait a minute. This one might come back. Looks like it's going to because Utah is backing up. Looks like it might be a procedure call against the Utes. Boy, just when you get something going, Utah then stumbles on a penalty.
Illegal procedure, offense, five yard penalty. Still first down. First and 15 now, the ball back on the 33. That's a huge penalty because Utah had it all the way down to the 12. He really had momentum. We'll see if Gauthier can regain that momentum. Gauthier wants to throw it deep. Intercepted. Tyrone Bird was back there just waiting for it like a center fielder. And Tyrone Bird picks it off. Nebraska has the best tandem of safeties in the Big 8 Conference. Steve Carmer, 31, the strong safety, and Tyrone Bird, the player who made the play there, number eight. Dolce looking at his favorite target, Roley, the whole way. Bird has it played perfectly, and therefore the interception. That's the second turnover for Utah. The fumble earlier by Williams after a catch. And then that interception by Dolce. Nebraska will have it at their own three-yard line. And the give is to Brown. Excuse me, Jones. Jones back in at tailback. And Jones burls ahead to the seven-yard line before Christensen can stop him. A little more running room now for Nebraska. 11.22 to go before the intermission. It's been all Cornhuskers so far, leading 28 to nothing here in the second quarter. With Bill Dolman and Dean Blevins, I'm Dave Armstrong, and a sunny day now in Lincoln. Boy, is the sun ever shining on the Huskers. You know, it was ever this woman Lincoln. It is hot. Yeah, when you played with OU, you always saw him in late November. Well, Jones is ripped down from behind by Errol Martin. Nice play by Martin that time, one-on-one. -on -one. That's a tough thing to do. Number 45, lettered in hockey and lacrosse in high school. Hmm. Too many guys you meet that have lettered no. in lacrosse. And he's from Ontario. But he gets Calvin Jones one-on-one, -on -one, and that's hard to do. Jones now three carries for just three yards after that loss of two, and it's third down and eight from the five. Hughes is hit right after he caught the ball. Ed Miller really racked him right after he caught it. And he will not have the first down at the 10-yard line. Nice job. We'll have this one in your living room. Watch number 37, right cornerback Ed Miller plays this ball perfectly. Gives Hughes just enough room to make the grab. Knows how much he can give up. 6'4", 216 pounds. Now, there's a big, big cornerback. These days, you see a lot of 5'8", 5'9", 5'10", type cornerbacks. Ed Miller, 6'4", 216. That's more of a safety size, it usually. Is. Linebacker. I, mean, I could feel that hit all the way up here. Stiggy gets it off. Takes a Nebraska hop kind of sideways and then stopped at the 45-yard line. They hit a Nebraska player at the 45. They're going to finally rule it down at the 35, but it looked like it hit a Nebraska player on the 44-45-yard line. And we're going to step aside with the Huskers in control. 9.19 to go in the second quarter with Nebraska. Uh, four rushing touchdowns for the Huskers to lead 28-0. With Dean Blevins and Bill Dolman, I'm Dave Armstrong. We're in Lincoln, along with uh, another packed house here at Memorial Stadium. The 28 points there, that's what the odds makers said. That's how they said this one would end up. Nebraska comes in around a 28-point favorite. Keep an eye on number 73, David Newman, the nose guard. Another pickoff, this one by Carmer, but there's a flag down. What a play, though, Dave. Carmer came in and ripped that one away. I, I don't know. I hate to speculate on penalties, but this one might be against Utah anyway. I think it was a hold or something. And if it is, it'll be declined, and it'll be Nebraska ball in the third turnover for Utah. It's just a, it is a penalty against the Utes. Oh, and what a play that uh, will now stand for Steve Carmer, the mm -hmm. fine senior strong safety, number 31. 
I was just about to say that he led them in tackles. He's the first defensive back to lead in tackles since 1965. Carmer with an interception. Bird had an earlier one. Two picks now for the Huskers. The third turnover for the Utes. And Nebraska has it again in great field position at the Utah 48-yard line. Actually, they mark it at the 47, first and 10, Nebraska. Grant again looking to throw. Going back into the sun, Hughes turned the other way. Hughes turned inside, the pass went outside. Take a look at the play before, the interception. Dolce has the pressure, but Steve Carmer will break on the ball. We don't see that, but we do see the fine pressure. And uh, I tell you what, Dolce got the ball on the money. The, the, the play was, the, the interception was not his fault. It was a tremendous defensive play by Carmer. Grant, now just three of eight. He had three balls dropped, though, so we'll always keep that in mind as we look at his numbers. And Utah is turning it over to one of the top offenses in the country. Jones, with the yardage coming tough for him right now, picks up only a couple. Dave Chaters makes the stop for the Utes. Gary Gibbs, the Oklahoma coach, says that uh, Calvin Jones reminds him of Herschel Walker, the size and the speed, the combination. Right, and the fact that he'll hit people and bounce off. We haven't seen that yet, but I would assume before the day's over, we'll see Calvin Jones ricocheting off of Utes. Mm, Utes hope you're wrong. <laughs> Grant, Bates, still has it. Diving ahead, looks like he's got the first down. Good play by Mike Grant. Gets it down to the 35-yard line, and that'll be a first down for Nebraska. Well, that's an outstanding job by Grant. I had seen him a couple of years ago and felt that he didn't make a lot of wise decisions. Uh, nobody has ever questioned his physical abilities, but mentally, sometimes he hasn't been into things. Watch him this time coming around, and then watch the fine block by center Terry Chorney. He stays right on his tail. He sees Chorney with a knockout block, comes right back to the left. Super job by Mike Grant. Ball came loose, but it was ruled down by the turf. Nebraska's turning up those first downs. Another good decision by Grant. He faked the pitch, and you mentioned earlier, Dean, that Utah's going to start playing the pitch. They are now, but Grant's still gaining the yardage anyway. And that's what happened as Peter Tonga, number 49, goes pitch, leaves the lane open. Watch 49 white. You'll see him at the top of your screen as Grant goes down the line for the option. Peter Tonga goes for the pitch, forces Grant to cut up. He says, fine, I'll do it and move the chain. Super job by Grant. Grant now, it's, uh, including that touchdown run of 16 yards, has run for 57 yards in this game. Lots of time to throw. Steps up into the end zone for Hughes. It was a little bit too long. Hughes was there. Even if he catches it, though, I'm not sure he stays in the end zone. And we have yellow on the on the field. I like the uh, I like the call, though. Nebraska on first and ten puts it up in the end zone and uh, had an open receiver, just unable to connect. And a holding call against Nebraska. That'll back him up ten. Luther Ellis was really putting some pressure on Mike Grant as he got rid of that ball. Well, Mike Grant, there you had a look at him, number five. You know he has to be relieved. He's been looking forward to this day for a long, long time. Has been frustrated off and on during his career. So he definitely feels like it's his time, although he has been very cooperative with the other quarterbacks in camp at Nebraska. Well, I don't think people, fans, I don't think they realize that uh, players get along. They're, they're team first, and you have to be. And uh, at Nebraska especially, they'll bring in five, six, seven quarterbacks to compete for the job. Now first down and 22 yards to go. The ball backed up to the 36. On the draw to Jones. Jones with a huge hole. Jones stays on his feet. There's that Herschel Walker-like speed and strength. Down to the 15-yard line and close to a first down. Always trying to keep the defense on the defense. Keep them on their heel, heels. And Nebraska, Tom Osborne, knowing that the Utes are thinking pass, goes draw up the middle. And who better to hand it off to than number 44? Calvin Jones has a hole, knows what to do with it. 213-pounder. They're measuring for the first down. 
Offensive newcomer of the year in the Big 8 Conference easily a season ago. 900 yards, averaged 8 per carry, and had 14 touchdowns. And six in that game against Kansas. You know, if you give the Heisman by position, you just give it to Nebraska at back this year. You rack up the numbers that these guys will. They're Heisman numbers, but you have to split it up, and uh, probably neither will, will be a, a strong candidate. We'll see, though. Kind of reminds you of that Mike Rozier, Jeff Smith tandem here at Nebraska back in the <laughs> yeah, 80s. They've had a lot of tandems here. Yeah, they sure have. That was a 22-yard run. And Grant wants to throw it. Gets it off to Jones. Jones looking for the end zone. Pulls his way in. Touchdown! Wow! Drops off the screen pass. Easy job to drop it off. Beautiful kick out block. And Swanson, number five, gets bulldozed over by Calvin Jones. Has a full head of steam. 5'11", 213 pounder. We talked about ricocheting off Utes. Mm. There you have it again. Well, he really did. And right into the end zone for Jones. Bennett for the point after. It is good. And Mike Grant with his first touchdown pass of the year. This one, a 14-yarder to Calvin Jones, and it's 35 to nothing, Nebraska. Let's take one more look at that touchdown from Mike Grant to Calvin Jones. Grant does a good job of setting it up. All 11 men execute. A little slip screen to the right, into the boundary. Grant drops back, drops it off quickly to Jones, who has uh, clear sailing, and then uh, just time to lower the head and get in the end zone, and it's a nightmare for the youth. Jones, 210-pound sophomore, can really pack a punch. And Nebraska has packed a punch on the youths, leading 35-0 as Tom Sealer checks in for the Cornhuskers to kick off for the first time. They're getting a lot of playing time now for a lot of guys. We're still with seven minutes to go here in the second quarter. Sealer with sort of a funny-looking kick and hops at the 15. Nice run back by Rowley. Rowley picked it up on the run and got it up to the 37-yard line. They like that two-minute range, don't they, the Huskers? Look at that drive. They, they've all been around the two-minute range. 47 yards, seven plays. Jones had a 22-yard run in that series and also that 14-yard touchdown catch. So it's 35 to nothing. Ron McBride beside himself now on the Ute sideline. McBride calls this team his first legitimate team. This is his third year. A lot of movement down on the line. John Perella, the first of the guys in the red shirts to jump across. Right now, Nebraska saying they were drawing offsides. But they weren't. Perella and the defensive lineman, Dean, kind of did like the uh, men's volleyball team to the U.S. They all shaved their heads before the season. Times are changing, Dave. And it used to be you tuck those locks in, inside your juice, and now, now they're all cutting them short. There we go. Yeah. Where's his part? <laughs> well, he's playing a big part in this Nebraska defense. John Perella got married a couple of months ago. Obviously has not made him soft. First and five now for Utah. Dolce is hit by guess who? The guy we just showed you, John Perella. Another sack for the Husker defense. Well, that time again, Anderson and Stewart, the linebackers of Nebraska, threatening the blitz. And Dolce, a little happy feet. That means he's getting a little concerned about the heat. Stay back there in the pocket. Stay deep. Stay deep. He comes up and runs right into the Nebraska pressure. I think he'll go back. It's a lot easier to call that from up here than down there on the field, but that's what the quarterback should do in that do you situation. you feel that pressure when oh, it comes? Oh, you feel it. You bet. But you've got to stay back. You've got to stay patient. You've got to hope. trust yourself and trust your line. There's that little flip pass again. 
And shoved out of bounds on the play is Hooks by Wilhite. Bill Dolman's been roaming the Nebraska sidelines. Bill is probably pretty happy over there, isn't it? The word is relaxed. <laughs> they did not anticipate being up 35-0 on this Utah team. You talked about Ron McBride saying he had a legitimate team. Nebraska thought so, too. Well, now Nebraska's saying, we didn't expect it. Maybe we're better than we thought. And on my way back over to this sideline, I hear the fans rumbling, Washington, I wonder what will happen mm. in Washington. Back to you. That's coming up in a couple of weeks at Washington. That'll be the big early game for these Huskers. They gave up 618 yards against Washington a year ago. This defense Pass is better. Pass completed to Anderson. You're right, last year for Nebraska, Dean, a team that went 9-2-1. and one. There are only two losses to the teams that shared that national crown, Washington and Miami. Tie to Colorado. In the flat, yet another completion, but uh, again for short yardage. And Bill's a smart man. He leaves the team that's losing 35 nothing. He goes the other side. Huh? <laughs> that's right. That's right. No he, dummy. He got out of there in a hurry. First and ten now for Utah at the 43 of Nebraska. Well, McBride may put him in. <laughs> <laughs> Williams All runs around the far side, side, picks up about five or six on first down. That's one thing, Utah, they can't just pass. They've got to run it a little bit to make Nebraska respect the run somewhat, even though they're down 35 to nothing. I mentioned a few minutes ago to keep an eye on 73, David Noonan. Actually, keep an eye on the nose guard position at Nebraska. They're trying to find the answer there. Pat Engelbert was an outstanding player a year ago. Terry Keneally, number 99, is a player that uh, McBride's looking at. David Noonan, 73. Of course, Danny Noonan's little brother. 275-pound mm -hmm. little brother. <laughs> little big brother. Yeah. Pass is caught. Greg Hoffman, a converted tight end, makes the catch. That's close to a first down. They're going to mark it at the 32, and I think he's got a first down for Utah. Hoffman, a big target, 6'4", 218-pounder. They run him out of the slot back position. You mentioned converted from tight end. Good athlete, pre-med student, underneath route here, under open, and uh, nice job of getting the ball to him. That's a good pickup. Mike Anderson gave just a little too much ground. There's a good look at Hoffman. From Pocatello. Oh, another first down for Utah. Ball at the 32-yard line now of Nebraska. A lot of five defensive back looks for Nebraska today against this passing attack. Out in the flat to Rowley. Who's got it? Perfect play by... Oh, interception! Reese comes up with it. It looked like Rowley was going to have it, and Reese took it right away. And Rowley is still down. This could be a huge oh. blow for Utah. Holding the right knee, not a good look. Rowley, who they consider at Utah the best wide receiver in the WAC conference. Well, this is a, a all or nothing play. Doshe does his job, throws it up, and Rowley almost comes down with it. Mm. Looked like he jammed that knee when he went down. Ooh. Super play by John Reese. Now, right. Nebraska really sort of scrambling at that right cornerback position, trying to find the answer there. Reese is a redshirt junior. Dean, right now, forget the 35 nothing. If you're Ron McBride, your only concern right now is number 19, Brian Rowley, a man you consider to be the best player in the WAC conference. Nebraska leads by 35. Now the news is uh, doesn't look good for Utah. Rowley was carried out on a stretcher. We'll get word from Bill Dolman in just a second as to the extent of that injury. It's Nebraska ball back at their own seven-yard line after the interception by John Reese. And a give us to Corey Schlesinger. Schlesinger with his first carry of the game takes it up to the 12-yard line. Nebraska does as good a job as anyone in the country of making you move defensively in the secondary, especially with movement, uh, with motion in the backfield. They can get you about in any position they want to have you in. They just kind of move you and then hit you. <laughs> Second down, five yards to go. It's like Grant is calling the audible again. Grant with a quick hitter out to 
Jones and really did hit him quick. Went off his body and out of bounds, incomplete. Second, or actually third down now and five yards to go. Third and five for the Huskers at the 12. Not a good job here by Grant, who will get some pressure. He has a, a ute in his face, that time shaders, number 47 in his face. And I can understand why the ball was not on target. He threw it a little bit behind. Uh, who was he throwing it to? It wasn't Brown. It wasn't Jones out in the, yeah. in the flat. Mm -hmm. Good play by Chaters. Well, third and five now for the Huskers with 4.13 to go before the intermission. Across the middle, pass is caught by Washington. And it looked like he fumbled the football, and Utah saying they have it. No, Nebraska has it back. Pita Tonga was right there to hit Washington right after he caught it. He let it go, and it looked like Washington got it back again. Washington, an absolutely an outstanding blocker, but he does not has not caught the ball well. We'll see if this one is catchable. Number 89, William Washington, the ball on target. Played 28 regular season games before he caught a uh, pass. Caught one last year against Oklahoma. Tim Lambert strips the ball. Washington, a player who almost transferred away from Nebraska. He saw the writing in the wall with Johnny Mitchell, but glad he stayed. And on fourth down, Grant's going to go for it here. And flags come flying. Interesting decision here. Fourth and one, 35 nothing, 331 to go in the second quarter, and you go for it. Illegal procedure against the Huskers. Now they won't go for it. It'll be fourth and about five and a half instead of fourth and a half. And that brings Stiggy out. Stiggy the punter. You know, Stiggy last year in the opener for Nebraska when they won, I don't know, 150 million to nothing. <laughs> it was 71-14 over Colorado State, actually. Stiggy never punted in the game. And we watched him closely in the third and fourth quarter. He did get in the game as a holder on kicks and point afters and things like that, but that was it. Siggy, he was over yawning, doing his nails, having a good time. But today, it's now his third punt of the day. He might have been studying. This guy is a great student, pre-vet med, GTA All-American academically. Mm -hmm. All-state defensive back. So he's a good athlete back in high school in Washington, Kansas. Utah came after it, and Stiggy unloaded it. Picked up by Sean Williams. Williams returns it to the 44-yard line of Nebraska. 3.17 to go before the intermission. Right now, there's a sort of a dark cloud hanging over Utah, not because of the three interceptions, not even because of the 35-0 score, but because of the fact that Brian Rowley, their best receiver, has carried off in a stretcher. Well, you add it up. I mean, what could have been worse than being behind 35-0? Have your best player go down, and it, it might be serious. We'll try to give you the update a little bit later. Yeah, McBride right now probably wishing he had never scheduled this game with the Huskers. to Williams, who slipped a little bit behind the line and stopped right there by David Noonan. Jamie Lever also in on the stop for Nebraska. Oscar defense has shut out Utah, a team that scores a bunch of points, in fact, averaged 23 a game last year. And the flags come in. Well, this play develops. First series for Nebraska, they were three and out. The next time they got the ball, Lance Lewis scored from 57 yards, and that really opened the floodgates for the Huskers. Well, ever since then, it's been all Nebraska. Ball start by Utah, so second down again, but now second and 15, back at the 49. Clock moving under three minutes. Utah has not gotten the job done on the ground. Not much better through the air for the Utes. No screen pass out to Williams. Had room to run initially, but then uh, it was closed in a hurry by Dante Jones. Williams a good receiver for Utah. 24 receptions a year ago, third on the team. 
So he can chew it up running or receiving. Quick offense now by Utah on third and eight. Dolce puts it up again, outstretched to his hooks and could not come up with it. So it brings up fourth down, and the punting unit comes out for the Utes. Well, Hooks had a step on Mike Helms out of David City, the backup cornerback, number 25 for Nebraska. We'll take a look at it. Left side of your screen, about a yard too much as Hooks behind Helms inches. Check that, Hines. You see Hughes back waiting for it at his own 10-yard line. High punt. Hughes comes up for it, calls a fair catch, has it at the 16-yard line. And Nebraska will restart their offense there. Just a 26-yard punt as he tried to hang it up. It's 35 to nothing. Nebraska leading Utah. I know the odds makers, Dean, predicted that uh, Nebraska would win by around 25 to 30, somewhere in that range. But I think even this guy, Tom Osborne, has to be surprised with the score here nearing the half. Well, he's got a good club, no question about it. This is his 20th year, he said, going in. This is one of the top five or six teams he's had. And if that guy plays well, who knows? Sky's the limit. And Grant has played well here this afternoon. Now, it's interesting. You talk about an inexperienced, experienced quarterback. That's Grant. <laughs> complete to Trumaine Bell. His first catch is a Husker. Trumaine Bell, they say, is a real find for them. 6'3", 210. And a guy, they say, Dean, is a real wide receiver type. Mostly they have converted running backs, but Bell at 6'3", has the size of a wide receiver. Well, he gives them another dimension because of that. They have the smaller receivers and the speedy ones in Hughes and Dixon, the 5'8", 5'10", type speedsters. But uh, Bell a little rangier. Second and five from the 22. Draw play to Jones. Sheds one tackle, sheds a couple more, and goes out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Jones has a little bit of a word there for Ed Miller as he heads back to the huddle. Dave Chater's actually in good position, number 47, but he's unable to hold on. Jones is just so strong. He can run through arm tackles, especially when you try to get him up around the shoulders. That's no place to go after that guy. Miller was uh, jawing at Jones just a little bit, and I'm sure Jones reminded him to check out the scoreboard. Grant, across the middle, intercepted. Picked off by Mark Swanson. That pass was overthrown. Well, the first turnover by the Huskers. And there was motion against uh, Nebraska. I'm sure Utah will decline that and take the ball. Not a good job here on Grant, by Grant. We've been talking about the good decisions he's been making. He's got a receiver open this time in the middle, unable to find his wing back. Hawkins was open, but overthrows him, and that one's picked off. So it's worked both ways. Osborne. Over there coaching his offensive team as they come back off the field. It's gone both ways for Grant. He's had some drops, but he's also uh, made a couple of errors. We're hearing now the word down from the sideline, Bill Dolman, that the injury to Rowley might be an ankle injury, not a knee injury. That would be good news for Utah if it's nothing severe. Henry Lusk makes the catch. Steve Carmer there on the coverage for Nebraska. Who I'm impressed by Steve Carmer. Number, number 31, the strong safety is uh, just all around the ball. Completion, but uh, he is a half second behind. A while ago, he made the great interception. That time he broke on him, was there for the quick tackle. From Wahoo, Nebraska. Probably after that interception, he said, Wahoo. <laughs> they get back home for sure. Yeah, Dolce not much doing for him. Utah has all their timeouts left. They're not using any right here. Dolce, a junior college All-American quarterback at El Camino. Thrown those three interceptions today. Not the way he wanted to kick start. 92. Whoa! The Lusk again, but... Lusk is met in a hurry by Will Height. Will Height, who had six interceptions a year ago, Dean, 
He's the only guy in that defensive backfield that doesn't have one today. Reese, Bird, and Carmer all have a pick. And he's the only one in the secondary with a bullet in his arm, too. He was shot in an East St. Louis incident and uh, carries a bullet in his arm. Well, he shot into Lusk that time, that's for sure. And Nebraska has shot down the Utes in the first half. Osborne and the Huskers stroll off here at Memorial Stadium with a 35 to nothing lead over Utah. Lance Lewis got the hit parade going with a 57-yard touchdown run, and the Huskers haven't stopped running since, leading 35-zip. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, where the Nebraska Cornhuskers have rolled up a 35-0 lead on the Utes of Utah. With Dean Blevins, I'm Dave Armstrong, and Dean, not quite an offensive show for the Huskers. Well, I tell you, Nebraska dominated both in the offensive and the defensive lines. They intimidated Utah early, got on them, and then, of course, the injury to Rowley added insult to injury, and uh, it's been a miserable the first half for Utah, a team that was talking bold before the game started. Yeah, and added injury to insult, I guess you might I'd say. Yeah. Lance Lewis got the hit parade going with a 57-yard touchdown run. And this was in the, on the second possession, the first possession, Nebraska was stopped. And then it was Derek Brown who scored from 26 yards out. Derek Brown has a typical Derek Brown first half, runs through a tackle, avoids another tackle, 11 rushes, 80 yards. This is longest a 26-yard touchdown. Mike Grant had a pretty good day, and this one he goes in by himself from 16. And this follows a pass that should have been caught for a touchdown, and Grant comes back, a play where a penalty occurred. He skates into the end zone untouched. First and goal from the six, Andre McDuffie takes it in. And this is when Nebraska were just assaulting and pounding Utah. McDuffie virtually untouched a backup. And then the touchdown pass from Grant to Jones. A little swing pass out in the flat, and, Brad, and uh, Jones bulldozes his way into the end zone. And that made it 35 nothing, which is our score. And the stats, I'll tell you, it's going to have to go. The stats have to go with Nebraska, and they certainly do. Well, I think the most indicative number is the number of first downs in the ballgame. 15 for Nebraska here at halftime, only four for Utah. They have gotten nothing going, and Nebraska concerned last year with defense. They were, I think, emphasizing that in spring ball, and they played very, very well defensively. Rowley, a player that you mentioned, was injured in that first half. We thought it was a knee injury, and look, he's got the ankle ice down. Still doesn't look good, but I think that uh, the first thing you think of is the worst-case scenario, and that's a torn-up knee. At least it's an ankle, and uh, the, the, the severity of the ankle injury at this point, we don't know. So Rowley goes off, and Utah went off, trailing 35 nothing at the half. And let's check now with Bill Dolman on the sidelines. Dave, you and uh, Dean were talking about the injured Utah player, Brian Rowley. The, the word down here on the sidelines is that it's a fractured ankle. So one of the bright stars of the Utah offense has dimmed a little bit, and he'll be out for quite some time in this 1992 season. Back to you. That might put him out for the whole year. A fractured ankle, certainly not good news for Brian Rowley in the Utes of Utah. And no good news for Utah at all. Heard this afternoon at Nebraska as the Cornhuskers have rolled to a 35-0 advantage at the half. campus of the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. The Nebraska Cornhuskers here at Memorial Stadium have racked up 35 points on the Utes of Utah, and we're still only halfway through. With Bill Dolman and Dean Blevins, I'm Dave Armstrong. Our Big 8 Game of the Week on Prime Network has featured the running of Nebraska. The, horse, the Huskers starting it with a Lance Lewis 57-yard touchdown run. They had four touchdown runs in the first half and added a pass just for good measure from Mike Grant, the quarterback, to Calvin Jones, the running back. Jones, uh, number 44 there on your screen. He ran pretty well in relief of Derek Brown. He rushed for 35 yards on just six carries in that first half. And Jones rushed for 80 more. So those two wee backs, as we call them, rushed for over 100 yards in that first half, team. Remarkable half, the best tandem in America, an outstanding blocking up front, and you get an intimidated defensive front to 
uh, which they're playing against, and it all adds up to 35 to nothing. Now we've seen two games from the Big Eight this year, Nebraska here today and Oklahoma the other night, and boy, the Sooners looked impressive. Well, they've, they've both been impressive in different fashion. Oklahoma in the air, Nebraska again on the ground. Down in the uh, press area at halftime, Dave, everyone's shaking heads down there because, again, we've talked about this is a Utah club that comes in fairly highly re highly touted, certainly uh, more highly regarded than in the past couple of years, mm -hmm. considering uh, maybe challenging for the WAC uh, conference title, possibly a bowl, and yet they're down 35 nothing here after 30 minutes. That either says that Nebraska is great and the Big 8 is great or that the WAC may not be as strong a conference this year. Bennett kicks it through the end zone. Oh, Bill Dolman was in the locker rooms at halftime for this report. Bill? Dave, here's a news flash for you. The score is nothing, nothing. At least that's what it is on the Utah sideline. The Utah coaches say they're just going to come out and do what they do best and do what they've done in practice and just start make this uh, next half hour of football like a nothing, nothing ball game. On the other side of the coin, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, no surprises in the first half. They saw one formation they weren't familiar with. Everything over there is coming up big red roses. Back to you. <laughs> sure is, and they smell pretty right now. There's Dolce, his first half numbers. Those three interceptions really costly for Utah. Most costly was Brian Rowley going down, and now Dolce confused. He has to call a timeout. Rowley going out with an ankle injury that we believe to be a fracture that may put him out indefinitely, perhaps for the season. In his senior campaign, Rowley was figuring to have a huge year for the Utes of Utah. An inauspicious start here in the third quarter for Dolce and his Utes because uh, that was not an unconventional defense that his team faced right there. That was just your basic 50 front, 5-2 defense, four, defense four, second, uh, four people in the secondary that uh, Nebraska has run forever. A little confusion, though. Live next Saturday night, 6.30 Eastern. Philip Bobo leads Washington State against the Wildcats of Arizona. Great Pac-10 football action all season. you got to watch Prime Network for the greatest in college football. Just the start of things here in the third quarter. Dean, uh, the Big 8 race this year. It's going to be exciting, Yeah, isn't I was it? about to say, we have a great schedule this year. The conference uh, stronger than ever and a lot of balance, I think, with uh, the re reduced scholarship uh, numbers and the, some of the recruiting rules that have changed, you see more parity. I know that's a word that's overused in college football, but it's really true. And uh, the difference from top to bottom is not that great. Certainly in the Big 8 Conference, there are four clubs that you figure will be in the hunt with Kansas, Oklahoma, Colorado, and Nebraska, and the rest of them pretty solid as well. Yeah, the rest of them thinking they're going to be better than they were a year ago. And the give to Williams. He busts through the middle. And gets it up to around the 25 or 26 yard line. And Nebraska figures to vie for another title along with Oklahoma and Colorado. I think Kansas this year is the team that is the mystery team. Can they get up to that upper echelon? They've been in that top four. Now can they get into the top three or top two or even maybe even be the best team in the Big Eight? Certainly talent-wise, Kansas has a lot of elements. It's just a matter of can they win mentally. They've not had the tradition, but talent-wise, they are better. And Glenn Mason, coaching-wise, does an outstanding job. Yeah, it really does. And they give him a contract extension at KU. Dolce throws it out in the flat, incomplete. Again, feeling the pressure. Steve Carmer was right over there, along with Greg Hooks. Hooks, the intended receiver, and Carmer with, was with him every stride. I've really seen a Utah receiver wide open today. Well, there has been outstanding pass coverage by Nebraska. They have emphasized it a lot more. Uh, they had a lot of breakdowns last year defensively, and I think that that's why you saw them uh, devote so much time to it in spring ball and in the, in the fall camp, and they have certainly played a good passing team well today. Third and four. Blitz. Pressure comes, and it's picked off. Reese with his second interception of the day, and the fourth interception by the Huskers. Dole Shea throws it away for the fourth time today. Great pressure by Mike Anderson, 48, blitzing from his inside linebacker position. Travis Hill there as well. They go man in the secondary. Nice interception by Reese, who's turning in a solid game. This guy's a good player. 
four interceptions, two by Reese. And Nebraska again, as if they need it, in great field position at the 18-yard line of Utah. Mike Grant still in a quarterback. Derek Brown back in a tailback. Grant wants to throw on first down. And somebody got mixed up as far as the route was concerned. Dixon was waiting for it around the 12, and Grant threw that one into the end zone. Grant's first half numbers, that touchdown pass, 6 of 14, two or three or maybe even four could have been caught, but rushing is where he did the job as well. And for the most part made the right decisions. That's what a Nebraska quarterback has to do. Just get your team in the right position and go execute it. And for the most part, Grant did that in the first half. He said today in the paper he's not David Hum. He didn't play like some of the other players. He's going to be Mike Grant. Fumble. Fumbled again. Who's got it? Looks like Utah might have recovered the fumble. Ed Miller fell on the football. It was bounced off the face mask of Brown. He picked it up and then dropped it again. Easy to have a letdown when you go into the locker room. 35 nothing. Grant down the line. Pitches early. Shouldn't have pitched there. Fumble once, fumble twice, and uh, ends up giving it up. Blaine Berger picks it up for Utah. Not good execution that time by Nebraska, who for the most part has run the option very well today. And that's just the first turnover for the Huskers. Good play by Berger. Now it's first and 10 for Utah at their own 16. And the give is to Anderson. Oh, okay. Rolls ahead Anderson for about 20. three. David Noonan Wait. makes the stop there. Second turnover for Nebraska, I correct myself. And the five by Utah, four interceptions off of that guy. Shay, number 12. His uh, fullback position is pretty strong for the Utes. They've got three guys that they can they can go to. We've got Henry Lusk. We've seen Steve Abrams, 31, and Anderson a couple of times. Anderson may have had the best fall of anyone, had a couple of solid scrimmages. Ask you a question here, Dean, in a second that you may not have an answer. Good for. chance of that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we can make one up, Dave. Dolce to throw wide open is his tight end, Scott Murray. Murray catches it at the 30 yard line. I mean, you played with Oklahoma, those great teams in the 70s, probably never behind at halftime, certainly not 35 0. So what kind of attitude do, do they take going into this game trailing by this much? Well, as we see the nice dump off completion here underneath, uh, never behind by this margin, certainly behind a couple of times, never by this margin. I think that uh, what McBride said, guys, we're at zero. Let's start over. Let's regroup. And that's what they've done. They've been uh, fairly impressive here in the early going. It's a new ball game. You can't come out of this game totally demoralized. There are lots of uh, more football games to go. Pierre Jones. Jones with not much room to run. Trev Alberts stops him as he slipped a little bit on the turf. Last year, Utah had uh, 12 ball games, yet did not go to a bowl. And, of course, the reason when you play at, you, at uh, uh, Hawaii, uh, you can add an extra game. So they end up 7-5, and 4-4 four and four in the WAC. Not bad road trips in the WAC, huh? No. San Diego, <laughs> Hawaii. <laughs> Second down, 10 yards to go. No gain on that first down run by Jones. Dolce again, a quick drop. Quick toss out in the flat. This was intended for Sean Williams, but John Reese was right there again. His highlight reel is going to start to look like Reese's pieces, isn't it? Reese has been there. You're exactly right, Dave. He's uh, only been a couple of yards off, and that's the key. You just can't cushion so much. I mean, you've got to stay back so you don't get burned, but you can't give so much cushion that the receiver can turn up and have much running room. And Reese has really been on the spot, especially Carmen today. The strong safety has had an outstanding day of breaking on the football. Third and ten from the shotgun is Dolce. Two linebackers, no blitz. Across the middle, pass was deflected by Reese. Reese comes through again as the pass was intended for Sean Williams, and Reese was right there again. Boy, that was a perfect throw, perfect defense, and a, a good job by the receiver. He wasn't able to come down with it, but Dolce on the money. Reese again with good coverage from his cornerback position. As a true freshman, he played safety. So uh, he has made the conversion well. Young to punt again, a sixth time today. 
Dixon and Hughes are waiting for it. Back on their own 30-yard line. Low kick. Hughes has got it at the 32. Up the sidelines. Across the 35. All the way up to the 45-yard line goes Hughes. A 36-yard punt. And a line drive that allowed Tyrone Hughes to run it back. Reggie Olsen. 11.49 to go in the third quarter as Grant shrugs out. One of the big hits for Nebraska, and we'll talk about it when we come back, was Tony Veland, the guy they expected to back up at quarterback who broke his collarbone. And we'll talk about that when we come back with Nebraska winning by 35. Nebraska football first and 10 from their own 45-yard line here in the third quarter at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln. Grant checking off at the line. Rolls out, throws on the run, pass complete to Dixon. Room to run after he catches the football inside Utah territory to the 36-yard line before Mark Swanson could bring him down. Dean, we were talking about Tony Veland, the redshirt freshman that they expected to back up Grant at quarterback, and uh, he is out right now as Grant throws this one complete to Dixon. That really hurts them as far as the depth that's concerned at quarterback. It does as Grant comes out and he'll pop it to Corey Dixon. Little jitterbug number two. But Veland's a player that Tom Osborne mentioned yesterday. A big concern. They expect him back in about seven weeks. Threw in practice actually yesterday. Finished the spring uh, number one. But he and Grant have been battling. He's a good player with a collarbone problem now. Though. Dixon with a nice catch and a bullet. Dixon stays on his feet down to the 22-yard line. Errol Martin stops him there, but Dixon with a nice catch, and Grant really got some mustard on that one. And some people say, why pass 35 nothing up? Well, you aren't going to win them all. You're going to have to throw the ball sooner or later. You want to come out and see what you can do against some uh, competition in other uniforms. Play against yourself all fall and all spring. I wouldn't think that uh, if they punch this in, they would, the first unit would stay in much longer, though. Dixon with three catches now for 40 yards. Whoops. Grant couldn't find anyone. Flag goes down. He just throws it through the end zone. Might be a hold here on Nebraska. A lot of confusion that time by the Huskers. Grant popping his shoulder pad saying, "My." he's probably saying, my bad, which means my mistake. He's, it was his bust. It is a hold against the Husker front line. That's a horrible feeling as a quarterback, isn't it? When Ooh. you look back and no Ooh. one's there. It's bad enough. Uh, you know, if someone's going to bust, you at least want it to be someone else. Want it to be the fullback or the tailback. You don't want it to be yourself. Tom was saying yesterday that some of the young quarterbacks, he has some of the freshmen, they're good quarterbacks, but sometimes they get confused with the terminology. And he said they were they were calling some plays that, that we didn't have in our playbook. They move, it, move it back to him. Well, they don't understand. He said uh, maybe a third of the formations come in wrong. The, 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 the shuttle system, they don't give them the right formations. And the quarterbacks, the veteran quarterbacks, know what to get them into. Younger ones don't. And then you throw in the audibles that they must make. You're looking at a good percentage of plays that they don't get them in the right chance. They don't give them a chance. And so that's why quarterbacks like Tommy Frazier, who should play later, Ben Roots, a freshman, are a little bit behind. Jones has to go back for it. Jones still on his feet, though. Jones knocked out of bounds. What a run by Calvin Jones down to the 13-yard line. Reggie Alston finally stopped him there. Straight option down the line of scrimmage. Quarterback gets hit, pitches the ball perfectly. A nice bump out block there. You get the corner bumped out, and uh, Calvin Jones able to turn it up inside, and that's the way you draw it up on a blackboard. Jones already with 56 yards rushing now on seven carries. Look at those numbers. You tack that onto the numbers of Derek Brown, who has rushed now for 82 yards. You've got yourself a powerful one-two punch. Two tight ends with Jones the lone setback. Second and one. Pass complete to Hawkins, who goes down immediately. Nebraska will run a lot. They will run the football a lot, but they'll do it out of so many different sets. The defense really has to be on its toes or you get burned. It's a game of numbers. It's a game of numbers and angles, and uh, Tom Osborne does as good a job as any is get in getting you in the wrong position. Well, they predicted rain today, Dean. It wouldn't rain on Tom Osborne in opening day, would it? <laughs> no, but it sure did at 6 a.m. It sure has on Utah. 
First and goal from the seven. Grant with time into the end zone, incomplete. Pass was intended for Tyrone Hughes. And Luther Ellis put a lick on Grant after he delivered the ball. The Northwest first aid station at once. Play action pass. Grant gets some pressure up the middle. Has a receiver come open late that overthrows him. And we're talking about Nebraska not throwing the football much. It's uh, They had 13 tosses in the first half, and they've thrown a lot on this series. Huskers are putting it up. I believe five here in the second half. So they've thrown it 18 times. Second and goal from the seven. Jones on the draw down to the five. Preston Christensen stopped him there. So it'll be third and goal from around the five, five and a half yard line. Brand new turf here at Memorial Stadium. Dean, we were down on the turf yesterday. It feels nice. Still like to see grass, though. It, oh, I'd love to see it. And 99% of your players would like to see grass, but uh, not going to. The more economically feasible to stay with the artificial turf. Third and goal for Nebraska at the six yard line. Grant keeps it. Grant touchdown. Good decision again by Mike Grant, who has his second rushing touchdown of the day. Rushed in earlier from 16 yards out. That one from six yards. And bend it on to try the point after. It is good. And it is 42 to nothing, Nebraska. Lead option here as Grant fakes up the middle. To he comes around. Lewis uh, is, the, is the fullback he faked to. We'll take another look at it. Just power football. Nice job on the offensive line. Jim Scott, 51, a fantastic center. Clears the way, and the backs do their job as well. Ken Malin, 62. One more time. Well, alternately, when we talked about looking back and having no one to pitch to, that's got to be a great feeling as a quarterback, Dean, to look and see that huge hole in front of you. It's better than pitching to a good back. <laughs> 9.42 to go here in the third quarter with the Huskers in control. Nebraska 42-0 over Utah. They've tacked another touchdown on the board here in the third quarter. Mike Grant taking it in from six yards out. And now it'll be Tom Seeler to kick off for the Huskers. Seeler, who kicked off once in that first half, will do it again here in the third quarter with Bill Dolman and Dean Blevins. I'm Dave Armstrong. Our Big 8 Game of the Week finds us in Lincoln today. Two weeks from now, we'll be at Missouri for the Tigers taking on Texas A&M. Back here later this month to watch Arizona State take on the Huskers. Williams back there along with Pierre Jones, but they won't get Whoa. a chance. Jones fields it 10 yards deep in the end zone. And Utah will start again at their own 20. And again, around that two-minute mark for the scoring drive. What's the deal? <laughs> Can't here? explain it. What is the deal? Can't explain it. <laughs> Seven plays, 55 yards. Grant with that six-yard touchdown run. His second touchdown run of the day. He also threw for a touchdown. I would say the starting quarterback job, that, that question is no longer a question as far as Nebraska. If he can continue this kind of success, Mike Grant, this could be some kind of year. Maybe the first national championship for Tom Osborne. And he talked at halftime about those fans who have been on him about not winning a national title. Well, maybe uh, that would that would do it. Long way to go, though. And a long way for Utah. Golshay oh. with a fake outside. Goes to Lusk. Lusk waits for the ball and comes down with it. Troy Dumas on the coverage. And Lusk got behind him. All the way into Nebraska territory at the 44-yard line. Beautiful play, perfectly executed, except Dolce could have thrown the ball a little farther. would have been a touchdown. Pump fake, and that gets Troy Dumas to come up. And the ball underthrown by a couple of yards, or it was off to the races. Nice pickup nonetheless.
Dole Shea with another pass completion to Lusk. Ball carried by number 20. Williams on the run, picks up about three on first down. A lot of guys getting playing time now for Nebraska as Darren Williams makes the stop. Trey Albers at 67. 9.03, clock rolling here in the third quarter. It's a game reminiscent, for me at least, of uh, last year's Nebraska opener against Colorado State. 77-7 in that one. We're going to give to Abrams, who goes nowhere. Maybe a half yard, but that's about it. Trev Alberts in on the stop. Tackle by Morella and Noonan. Noonan. Been saying Noonan a few times. Mm -hmm. At Memorial Stadium, haven't they? Danny hasn't uh, been quite the impact player with the Cowboys that many had envisioned. He's a fine player and still may have some good days ahead of him. Draw play to Williams. Will not have the first down. Stops about four yards shy of that first down marker. Trav Alberts with a nice stop. Steve Carmer also in there defensively. Speaking of pros, talking last night with some of the Utah people, a couple of names that pop out of the past. Scott Mitchell, the big left-handed quarterback yeah, that uh, yeah. played well here in 89, drafted by the Dolphins. And right. maybe the, the best known, Larry Wilson, the oh, safety yeah. for the Cardinals. I remember seeing him play with two casts on. Remember he had the yep, broken arms? Absolutely. He was a youth. Fourth and three, and the Utes are going for it. Why not? You're down 42 nothing. And the flat pass caught by Abrams, and he's got the first down to the 31-yard line. Let's silence this crowd in a hurry, didn't it? Dolce doing a fine job along with the rest of Utah after that humiliating first half. A little dump off out in the flat and has just enough cushion from Troy Dumas to pick up the first down. Nice job. First and 10, Utah now at the 31 of Nebraska. Utah now starting to get something done through the air. Williams trying to bust outside, but Carmer was with him. Carmer showed a great burst of speed there to pull Williams down. Uh, really impressed with Carmer. Really impressed with him. He zips to the ball. It's a ma he's a magnet. What's the basic duty? What, what are the differences in duties with strong safety and a free safety? The strong safety is going to run support a lot more. Free safety is going to play for your center fielder. He's going to play back in the secondary. And so Carmer is a strong safety. He's really watching those, he's those gonna, running backs you a lot. Bet. He's going to be in a lot of plays. As we talked on the other side of the ball, Sharif Shaw, 33, was expected to have a big day. He was good against the run as a strong safety for the use. Pass is caught across the middle. Scott Murray with his second catch of the day. Murray complete, looking to the turf. First down and 10. The first down for the Utes inside the 20 down to the 16-yard line. This is the best-looking drive for Utah today. Dolce has now put it up 28 times. Pitch back to Jones. Nice little juke step, and he goes out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Pierre Jones, a junior out of San Diego. Clock stops with 6.24 to go. Toss sweep, Ed Castillo, 79. The right guard is pulling, looking for someone to hit. Doesn't, doesn't really find anyone, but... Nice yardage for Pierre Jones anyway. Second down, four yards to go. He picked up six on that, Dean. The ball resting at the 10-yard line. Castillo lined up at left guard here. Play action. Wide open was Murray. Wide open. That's the first time today we've seen a Utah receiver absolutely wide open. And Dolce probably in shock. Couldn't not find him. Yeah, I'm shocked, too, that he uh, didn't find him and complete him because this is right down Dolce's alley. I mean, you really, a quarterback back like Dolce, who is a smart player, 
usually picks up a bust, and that's what happened with Nebraska that time. It just uh, flat overthrows the receiver. Looked like he got rid of it a little bit early and then saw the linebacker underneath and overthrew it just a little bit. Jerked. If he waits two more steps, then he's got it easy. It's a, so much easier to play that quarterback position right here. Man, it's easy. I can even play QB <laughs> from up here. Jones again goes into the line. Forget about it. Dante Jones. So it's fourth down now. What do you do here if you're Utah? You don't want to get shut out. But it's fourth down and about a yard to go. Well, I'd be tempted to take the three points. I mean, get on the board. Oh, Scratch in 92 here early. I would be tempted as well. And right now, the black shirts, as they call them here at Nebraska, the defense wants to preserve that shutout as Utah will go for it. And if you're a Nebraska player or fan, you want them to go for it. You don't want to give up the three. You want to have the chance for the shutout. Fourth and one. And the give is to Anderson. I think he might have enough for the first down. Yeah, they're marking it down around the five. He needed to just get to the six. So that'll be a first down to keep the drive alive for Utah. Utah. Now let's see if Nebraska's defense can stiffen here. Utah, after not having a first down for throughout the first quarter, is starting to pick up a little bit of damage as far as the first down situation is concerned, but they are still scoreless. First and goal now from the five as Anderson goes in motion. The pitch out to Jones. Forget about it. Jones stopped for a three-yard loss. Matt Penland was right there, and so was David Noonan. Noonan watching from his nose guard position, 73, very strong player, really synonymous with the name Noonan. Missed spring practice with a severe ankle sprain coming back, and it's a big position for Nebraska this year. Noonan playing well there. So a loss of two, second and goal from the seven. From the shotgun now, Dolce. Wide open is Lusk. Touchdown, Utah. So the Utes get on the board. A seven-yard touchdown pass, and a few fans from Utah finally have something to clap about. Dole Shea with his first touchdown pass of 1992. This one, a seven-yarder to Henry Lusk. Lusk had earned that, didn't he? Because he was the guy that had that big pass reception to start this drive. Good job by Dole Shea hanging in there. Nebraska blitzing once again, and Dole Shea hanging on to it long enough for Lusk to break open, and he throws it on the money. And now Utah will go for two. Williams in motion. Dole Shea. First target, not anywhere close to the ball, and neither was Williams, his second target. Dante Jones was putting some pressure on. But a touchdown nonetheless for Utah, this one from Dole Shea to Lusk. Lusk in the flat, and he's able to avoid the tackler. Troy Dumas comes over a little late. We'll take one more look at it, and the blitz comes at Dole Shea. Hangs tight. Good job by the line. We haven't mentioned that today. When Nebraska has come with the blitz, for the most part, Utah has held them in check, certainly here in the second half. And that time they do their job, and so does Gauchet. And we'll take a break. Utah gets on the board. Nebraska still has a commanding lead, though, at 42 to 6. Well, the Utah cheerleaders have been. Uh, now, they haven't over, been overworked, let's put it that way. <laughs> but uh, they finally had something to cheer about there as Utah gets on the board. 42-6, our score now. Tyrone Hughes is back deep to get it, but it's taken by the up man. Dixon, and he goes out of bounds at the 35-yard line. King Lambert pasted him out of bounds there. Let's look at the Utah scoring drive. This is something we haven't typed into our graphics machine today. <laughs> 13 plays. They took it the distance. 80 yards, a little over five minutes, and Dolce hits Lusk 
for the seven-yard touchdown. The two-point conversion failed. 42-6, 430 remaining. And we have a switch at quarterback, Dave. Brand new quarterback in is Joel Cornwell, the senior out of Carrollton, Missouri. And he gives to Derek Brown. Brown gets it up to around the 40-yard line. Husker fans curious uh, who all is in the quarterback race. Cornwell, one of them, but maybe more significantly to this 76,000 throng here. They're wanting to see number 15, Tommy Frazier, who we probably will see today, the number one high school quarterback in America a year ago. You see what uh, Huskers do when they go on the ground. Well, they're grounding it out again today. And here's Derek Brown rushing again. Brown's nearing that 100-yard mark, isn't it? Picks up about two or three more there. He's got near uh, near 90 yards right now, is Brown. And there's the guy you were talking about, Tommy Frazier. Uh, great potential. Great potential. Versatile quarterback. Florida State uh, co offensive coordinator saying he could play for them. You know what that means. He can throw it a little bit. Great option quarterback. And uh, Tom Osborne recruited two outstanding quarterbacks. Ben Roots, a player I had a chance to see a lot at Oklahoma City, more than likely will redshirt. Frazier more than likely will not. We may know later this afternoon. Remember that last graphic we showed you where Nebraska has an impressive record when they rushed for over 300. They're there today. Derek Brown out of bounds at the 40, and he'll go over 100 with that run. Reggie Alston forced him out of bounds, but Derek Brown goes over 100 again. Backup quarterback comes in. All he wants to do is go execute, and perfect execution on Cornwell. Brings it down, waits until the free safety. Mark Swanson comes at him, and he's 10 yards downfield when he makes that pitch. So he treats that the same 10 yards downfield as he would, would three yards in the backfield. A great job by Cornwell, and uh, Brown says, thanks for letting me pick up the yardage. Brown now is 103 yards today. Cornwell to throw it. Oh, too high. Intended for Dixon. Dixon needs to be about two feet taller for that one. There you have a look at Cornwell. Backup players coming in wanting to impress, knowing that players like Tommy Frazier are on your heels. You kind of feel the pressure. You got to gear down. You got to slow down, play under control. That was a play that the receiver was wide open on. Just gear it down. Nebraska, Dean has some uh, freshman quarterback that they really like. They, they can't play them all. They've got a redshirt a few, right? I would think that Roots would be redshirted. A good, uh, Tom Osborne says, a great prospect, more of a passer. A, great, quick, a very quick release, strong arm. Roots. Uh, will be redshirted and Frazier more the runner probably more prepared to play right now he played in front of 10,000 fans a game down in Bradenton Florida every game in high school 10,000 10, high school yeah they play some football down in Florida in high school division Lewis with that last carry Lewis now on the ground today remember that 57 yard rush he had but his yard per carry average is going to be great for next week four carries 73 yards for Lewis Third down and eight yards to go, and Cornwell wants to throw and does. Hit immediately after the catch is Trumaine Bell. And it will not be enough for the first down. Ed Miller was right there with Bell. Looks like Cornwell checked off this time. Throws kind of a wounded duck out in the flat as Bell catches it, has nowhere to go, and it'll be fourth, and uh, what will it do? Fourth at the fourth down and four yards to go at the 33. The wind against you. You're out of field goal range, and they're going for it. Cornwell stays on his feet, but will not have the first down. I think to give you an indication of how comfortable this lead is for Nebraska, there was a fourth down and three play, and the crowd just kind of sat there. There was no cheering, like, come on, we got to make it here on fourth down. <laughs> They're just sitting there like, oh, um, well, what, what are we going to do here? Well, you know that this collection, uh, 76,000, this is essentially the third largest city in the state of Nebraska here today. You've got Omaha and the city of Lincoln, but this throng, this is the third largest city. <laughs> And I would say 98% of them are wearing, wearing some red. form of red. <laughs> on the outside, on the exterior. Yeah, maybe maybe uh, the underwear as well. <laughs> you never know. You go to that big red shop over there, they've got it all. Well, the give is to Abrams. 
yard draw. Picks up about six on first down. Troy Branch brought him down there. Clock mercifully winding down here in the third quarter. Under a minute and a half to go. You know, the trend nationally is that the student ticket sales are down. It's the same here at Nebraska. 2,000 tickets uh, from the students were left on sale because of them not buying them. They had 5,000 applications, and those are for the the stadium tickets, I believe, in the south end zone. 5,000 quickly. I mean, they, they sell out pretty quick. Oh, yeah. That's in the nosebleed section, too. Full save. Pressure put on. Unloads it. Gets it to Williams. He gets it across the 45 to the 46 yard line. Trev Alberts was right there. David White putting some heavy pressure on Dolce. Pierre Jones actually with a catch. Dolce straight back in the pocket. Once again gets the pressure. Pops it off in the flat and David White was the Husker applying the pressure. Out of first down for Utah, now up to the 46-yard line. Well, if you zeroed out that score at halftime like Ron McBride wanted to, it'd be 7-6, Nebraska. And getting loose is Williams. He could go all the way. He will. Touchdown, Williams. Wow. That looked a little like the run for Nebraska from Lance Lewis. He broke the tackles up through the middle and ran for the touchdown. And now if you're Utah and you're looking at that halftime score, you are in the lead. Well, and we mentioned earlier in the game that Williams comes in counted as a player who will break tackles and go for the long gains. And there you see it. Quickly respectability. So the touchdown from Williams, who had six rushing touchdowns a year ago, his first of 92. Boy, that looked like a replay of that Lewis touchdown. Yes, it did. And Utah with something more to cheer about. But all of this is coming too little and way too late. Still a quarter to go, but this would be the most miracle finish you can imagine. Jones gets in for the two-point conversion. Hey, things are turning around for Utah. That was a busted play, and they score the two points. 14-7 if you don't count the first half. But Nebraska says, let's count that first half because we scored 35, and it's 42-14 Nebraska. Let's take a look at the touchdown once again. Dolce in the backfield, hands it off. Broken tackle right there. Really not to, and another broken tackle. And Keith Williams will go the distance. 54 yards for Williams. And with the two-point conversion, 42-14. Wouldn't call it necessarily a ball game, but certainly more respectable back to four touchdowns. And on the extra two points, here's Pierre Jones. That's good effort. How many times have you seen a busted play and it works. I mean, you, you have everyone go the wrong way, and it ends up usually being a foot race to the end zone, and that time Utah wins the race. What did you say that spread was? 28. Guess what it is? 28. <laughs> How do they know? Third quarter action, 20 seconds to go. Tom Osborne uh, understandably has seen his team kind of come to a halt here in the second half. How tough is that? You were with Oklahoma when you had those big halftime leads. It's got to be tough emotionally to stay with the game when you're up 35 nothing. Well, it is, and uh, but the players that come in want to play so mm -hmm. badly that usually intensity is not the problem. Usually it's what we saw with Cornwell a while ago. He's really probably trying too hard. He had a wide open receiver, had it uh, motor running a little too fast, and you have to slow it down but uh, obviously the emotion has been drained the crowd is not into it at all mm -hmm. and this is uh, no reflection of the crowd because they're voted the best in the country they're the most avid fans you'll find anywhere well they do show up don't they you gotta hand it to these husker fans this is some of the greatest atmosphere you'll find in college football right here on a saturday all but kicks off to dixon who grabs it at the 15. dixon bounces off one and breaks outside and all the way up to the 39-yard line, Mark Swanson pulled him down there. But another fine return from Corey Dixon. A 23-yard return. Well, Dixon's a little jitterbug here. He's scary when he gets it. Watch him bounce off the tackles in the middle, and Swanson will actually make a nice play here. Actually bounces off his own man. 
Corey Schlesinger pops around the outside and uh, almost goes the distance as Grant comes back in to quarterback the Huskers. Well, perhaps Osborne also looking at that score and saying, let's just make sure we don't do anything silly here as Lewis goes up the middle and gets it up to the 46-yard line, and that will do it for the third quarter of play. Utah outscores Nebraska in the third quarter, but it's still a long uphill battle for the Utes. Nebraska still with a commanding lead at the end of three. It's the Cornhuskers 42 and the Utes of Utah 14. campus of the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. We're set to start the fourth quarter here. The Nebraska Cornhuskers leading 42-14 as we begin the fourth stanza. It's quick to go down on the field for a report from Bill Dolman. We've been talking about how great the Nebraska fans have been and the fact that they packed the stadium. Well, I tell you what, there's a lot of bad seats in the stadium as well. And here's a couple of Bob Bukas where I found them. Can you guys even watch the game from down here? Oh, yeah, we've got a real good view. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're a Husker fan and you're up 42-14, there's not a bad seat in the house. Yeah, even if you have to look through the fence, those guys <laughs> in jail down there. And the Husker fans are many. They start them young, too, don't they? No greater thrill as a youngster than oh, yeah. catching a part of the action. And they've got a lot of people to emulate. They have more All-Americans here at this school than any school by eight. Isn't that what the, yep. the numbers say? That's right. Grant unloads it. Pass is complete on the far side. Abdul Mohammed. Grant to Mohammed complete. Fourth out of bounds by Stops Rose. the clock with 14.56 to go. Get the sense that uh, this offensive unit would like to take on one more score before they call it a day. You bet. I think they've lost a little momentum. They'd like to to uh, totally secure the game, but also finish the second half uh, on an up note. Ball right at the 50-yard line, first and 10. Ball given to Jones. Jones outside. What a move. He can't weigh 210, 215. That is just tremendous quickness for a man that size as he gets about six yards on first down, down to the 44. Well, it's an outstanding play by Jones. Watch him run through the arms of Kim Lambert, number 46. Could have been tackled there. Lambert misses him. Runs past the tackler there. Stiff arms another there. It's finally brought down, but that's three tacklers that uh, could have had him. Should have been no game. Picks up six and a half. Brown, his counterpart, already over 100 yards. Now Jones will try to join him. Grant to throw again. That pass intended for Muhammad, but too far in front of him. Third down and four. This all started with a 57-yard touchdown romp by Lance Lewis. And from that moment on, Nebraska was in control of this game. Utah trying to come back here in the second half has put 14 points on the board to only seven for the Huskers as expectedly some of the uh, momentum from the Huskers has gone away with that huge lead at halftime and the give again to Lewis and he'll bust forward for that first down of the 39 Huskers have had a high percentage of conversions on third and say four or five and just turning around and handing the ball off to their fullbacks and eye backs. It's a nice advantage, isn't it? As a quarterback when on third and four, you don't always have to think we've got a pass. Exactly. Yeah. I tell you what, a big question for Nebraska, though, this year will be, what are they going to do when they really need a big play? Say mm -hmm. third and eight, third and 15. That last year, Johnny Mitchell was the big target. And how many times did he make the big play? This year, William Washington or someone else will have to make the snacks tight end, or they'll have to find another big play man. Grant down the middle. Going up to grab it is Truman Bell. But wait a minute. It's coming the other way from Ed Miller. Well, I heard it lateral. And finally... Picking it up huh. is Errol Martin. What happened? What well, was a heck of a grab, <laughs> and the officials obviously did not blow the whistle until the fumble occurred. Yeah, I thought the play was dead. Grant, play action, throws a little high, but a great snag here. Just suspends himself in air. Trumaine Bell 
And then Miller, yeah, Miller picked it picks right it off of Bell. And then he laterals it, <laughs> gives it off to Errol Martin. Bell, high. See, that's where I thought it was down. Boy, I thought he was down. Mm, that's why That's mm. why I stopped my call. Cause and, they're, and they're talking it over. They I, may very well change this. I thought Bell was down when he hit. Remember, the turf cannot cause a fumble. Listen to the call. Roll. Incomplete play. Oh. Second down. Mm. Huh. Yeah. All right. All right. You want to still a break for Nebraska? Uh oh. McBride. McBride is not happy about that call at all. I tell you what, though, uh, I think on the other side you have uh, Nebraska could gripe about it just as easily. Yes. Yeah, Maybe that's a neutral call. Say it should have been a caught pass and, and down, down right there uh -huh. yeah. down to the contact of the turf either way true main bell showed you something there six three receiver number 80 a, a great grab i thought that was gone when that yeah. ball was released i thought there's no way he'll hey, get that i guarantee you grant did as well he let go of a flyer watch how high this ball is and this is why osborne likes the size of this six three true main bell look at that That may have been a good call. That he never had the position. That he never had control. Mm -hmm. Three three options there. McBride says he felt that it was a reception and a fumble. Nebraska would have preferred the reception alone, and uh, I think the officials made the right call. Well, it's second and ten. The ball still at the 39 after they unravel all that. And we have replay and don't know, and the officials mm -hmm. don't have it. That's right. And probably made the right call. Pass completed to... Tyrone Hughes out of bounds near that first down marker. I'm not sure he has the first down. In fact, he'll be about a yard shy at the 30. Good looking play there. Mike Grant has flashes of really solid play. Strong arm, nice little roll here as receivers Third wide open. One. This one's on the money. Tight spiral. Hasn't had a tight spiral all day, but that one is. And Hughes on a little out route takes it and has it to third and short. Third and one. Oh, movement. Jumping early over there is Rob Zadiska. And now it'll be third and six. A little different scenario. Grant said, come on, guys, let's stay fired up. This one isn't over yet. Grant's been known to be quiet, but he's speaking up more now and then speaking with some of the Nebraska. Yes, Speaking with some of the Nebraska riders, they said that uh, really a fun guy, real sarcastic, good sense of humor. But he is saying he's speaking up a lot more this year. Being a leader, this is fifth year. In his last shot here at Nebraska, Osborne telling us yesterday that Brand has earned that starting role three different times. <laughs> yeah. Brand to throw wide open is Washington. Touchdown! reception of his career, William Washington, and that one he held on to. Outstanding blocker, and uh, oh, they're calling it back. Oh, no. You see him hold his head in disgust. There was a flag down. I didn't see the flag. <laughs> Washington said, I dropped one, and now I catch it, and they call it back. So scratch all that. Ineligible, downfield, offense. Still third down. See who, see who went down. Nebraska tight ends do such a great job of blocking. Sooner or later, they're going to slip behind the secondary. You see it every game, and this is the second or third time that we've seen it today, and it happens as Chorney goes down. Looks like Washington. Chorney got down there a little bit too far. So now third and 11, back at the 40. the draw play to Jones. Close to a first oh, down. He'll be stopped at the 31-yard line, but I wouldn't be surprised if Nebraska went for it here. Crowd wants him to. 
fourth and two. Just when you think the crowd's asleep, you put them in a fourth and two, they'll let you know they're not asleep. <laughs> oh, working on their tans in Lincoln. How about that? <laughs> you never saw them do that in the old no. Nebraska game, did no. you? I've never seen anything short of toboggans and gloves. <laughs> I still don't believe it. We were driving into Lincoln yesterday. He said, I've never seen it. this warm. It's here. green. <laughs> Fourth and two, and Nebraska will go for it. Pitch back to Jones. He's got the first down and plenty more. All the way down to the 11 yard line. Wow. And we'll get a good look at it from ground level. Nebraska goes with two tight ends. Chris Zizda leading there, number 64. And Calvin Jones has lots of room. No question, he easily picks up the first and has it first and 10 from the 11. And now Jones with 92 yards, closing in on that century mark. First and 10 from the 11. A fake to Jones. Wide open. tight end. Armstrong gets the touchdown and Washington is yeah. denied again. What's Washington thinking? I mean, he better be a team player and he is. He is an absolutely wonderful person, people say about William Washington, but nice play action by Grant comes over and Gerald Armstrong out of Pumpkin, Nebraska with a great catch and even a greater thrust of the ball over the goal line. Great play by Gerald Armstrong. I've always wanted to call my name for a touchdown, and I did. Armstrong with the touchdown. Super play by Armstrong. Thank you. <laughs> He's a walk-on. Sealer now for the point after. Bennett's leg wore out after all his point afters, and Sealer tacks it on. And the Huskers now with another touchdown, 49 to 14 over Utah. Look at this again, Armstrong. Touchdown, Nebraska, and again, the commanding lead. Now the clouds have, fortunately for us, just been puffy, but no rain here this afternoon. A heavy rainstorm this morning. They were predicting thunderstorms for this afternoon. But the only rain has been on Utah's parade as Nebraska leads 49 to 14 with Bill Dolman and Dean Blevins. I'm Dave Armstrong, our Big Eight Game of the Week on Prime Network. And we've seen Nebraska roll it up. The second half has been a 14-14 tie. But Nebraska with that commanding 35-0 lead at the half. Read a quote from first-year Texas coach John Makovic saying the trend in football is to pick up the pace. Of course, they're going to be throwing the ball at Texas a lot. They certainly are in the Big 8 Conference in Norman and in Boulder. And uh, Nebraska's had it in the air a little bit this afternoon. Sure have. Jones fumbles it briefly, picks it up, and now breaks loose. And brought down by Kareem Moss. Nebraska, oh, come on. You guys are just fooling with us now on this time. 2.04 to go. I think I think that uh, they just don't feel like changing the time on those, on those <laughs> two-minute warning drives. But Armstrong, I see my name in lights here. Armstrong with the 11-yard touchdown reception. Boy, you really got a feel for Washington, though. He has the touchdown called back. Washington, who watched Johnny Mitchell score all those touchdowns from the tight end position, and his backup, Gerald Armstrong, comes in for the score. And if anybody can handle it, he can. He's yeah. a mature, articulate senior that's uh, really a class person. Tip ball. Hit David White in the back of the helmet, and he almost came up with it. And mad at himself for not. Started every game a year ago, and now he's in that rotation where Trev Alberts starts, and so Tra Travis Hill on the other side. But watch David White here. Huskers doing a much better job defensively overall, certainly rushing the passer. They gave up a lot last year. They're doing a better job. Dean, I need to correct myself. I said Washington, when we thought he had the touchdown, was his first of his career. meant first of his career in the regular season. He had that touchdown, of course, in the Citrus Bowl. Nebraska with 371 yards now on the ground. 
Last year they averaged 353 on the ground. And the second timeout taken by Dole Shea and the Utes with 11.54 to go in the ball game. It's Nebraska still with a big, big lead. Welcome back to Lincoln. Nebraska leading 49-14 over Utah here in the fourth quarter. It's the Utes ball at their own 29-yard line, second and 10. There are those linebackers again. A threatening blitz trying to disrupt the quarterback, make him a little indecisive. They drop off in the passing lanes. Dolce with a bullet to Jones. Pass. Pass is completed Dolce. up to the 36-yard line. That's going to bring up third and about three. The tackle by Bill Goldman has been on the sidelines with us throughout. He has watched that man, Ron McBride, pace those sidelines. Dean Blevins along with Dave Armstrong up here in the booth. And we have watched Nebraska roll it up on Utah. Dolce, you see his numbers, and the number he'll be most disappointed in is that four interceptions. Noonan stops him, but not in time as Utah picks up the first down up to the 40-yard line. I don't believe it. I want a shot of that, guys. Yeah, just take a freeze frame up. of yeah, that please. put it in your room. <laughs> I asked Will Shields yesterday, the uh, All-American uh, guard out of Lawton, Oklahoma, 300-pounder, how it, it, the cold up here was a concern when he was being recruited. He said, no way. I love the tradition, and, mm. and I'm very happy I came here. Well, they do have the tradition, don't they? Jones oh, fighting for every job. inch, gets it up to the... 43-yard line. Kevin Raymaker stops him there. They were concerned about Raymaker's had a knee injury, and he's on the mend now. They say he's he's back to good health. They're trying to get him some playing time here. Yeah, he, he's a great example of. Uh, he was a Proposition 48 casualty, and now he's an academic All Big Eight player. Now, sometimes the test is yeah. not really indicative of uh, what's between the ears. The guy's got something going on between the ears and uh, didn't look like it initially. He's a good good player and a good student. I tend to agree with those who say give everybody a chance. At least give them a chance. They fail and they fail, but let's give them a chance. Passing time there for Lusk. He had a chance, but Brinkley and Collins sandwiched him, and there was no chance for Lusk to get it. Once again, the Cornhuskers with fine coverage in the secondary. Dolce up the boundary, but uh, two red shirts in the area. That one's up for grabs and ends up falling incomplete. Nice defense there by Collins. And being congratulated by Ernie Beeler over there on the sideline. You look over on that Nebraska sideline, and there are a lot of red jerseys over there. They suit up a lot of guys. Oh, don't they? From the shotgun, pass complete to Lusk, who is becoming the leading receiver here at Utah. And Lusk gets it down to the 45-yard line for another Utah first down. Bill Dolman is down on the sideline with some of that Nebraska faithful. Dave and Dean, the largest crowd that the University of Utah has ever played in front of back home is 36,000 people. Here today, 76,000. Right now, a lot of those folks have left, so maybe it's starting to feel a little bit more like home to the Utah Utes, even though they're down 49-14. Back to you. Thanks. Not a lot of people have left, though, surprisingly. Here we are, 49-14 with nine and a half to go, and probably 80% of the folks still on hand. And they got here early, too. This is a long day for them. There's Williams crawling his way down to the 43-yard line is where they'll spot it. David Leader makes the stop. Well, I maintain that they're loyal fans, number one, number one, but number two, they're curious about their second parade All-America quarterback in the last five years, or second number one quarterback, and that would be, if he will get in the ball game, Tommy Frazier. Don't know if he will. Nice seat there, uh, pretty high for your friend. <laughs> yeah, he's keeping him in. He's watching for you because he knows he ha you have that flight to catch. <laughs> he wants I to make you sure were. you don't escape early. Running hard.
yard again. Tripped up and falls forward to the 40-yard line. That's going to bring up third and five for Utah. Matt Penlin makes a nice stop there for Nebraska. Third down and five. Under eight and a half to go now in this one. Nebraska jumped out to that 35 nothing lead, then made it 42 nothing in the third quarter before Utah scored a couple of touchdowns. Nebraska's just scored again to make it 49-14. Too much time. All that audibly took a lot of time. When you're a quarterback and you're audibling, what are you, what are you calling out? Uh, what well, kind of things? It, it changes from system to system. That time, uh, Doshe looks up. Doshe looks up and sees five defensive backs, so he they have, in their scheme, they have plays that they go to. Different teams will do different things. The the, the big thing this these days, uh, coaches talk about the box, and mm -hmm. that is a certain region behind the offensive uh, wall, and if there's six players in that box, some player and coaches say, well, you run the ball. If there are seven players there, you have them outnumbered and you throw the ball. So although we think it's real simple, it's really pretty complicated. And that quarterback shoulders a lot of responsibility. And both these teams have penalized quite a bit. Nebraska more so. Pass is deflected. Up front as Dolce tried to unload it. And it looked like maybe White got a hand on that. Hard to tell, but somebody from Nebraska did. And that's fourth down now. Let's see if we can pick it out. Might be Harris, 86. Yeah, it Nebraska, is. Dwayne Harris. They're playing a lot of people. He's listed third, so uh, the Huskers putting a lot of people in the ball game. And they say Harris has tremendous reach. Uh, from fingertip to fingertip is six feet ten and a half inches. Is that right? Wow. And he's only six two. I mean, that's a normal reach for a guy maybe six six mm -hmm. six seven. Just tremendous reach. Jason Jones, the new punter in for Utah. Tyrone Hughes back to get it for Nebraska. He's waiting at his own ten. And again, delay a game. Play clock runs down to zero, so they'll back him up five more. You no, know, maybe we'll see Frazier. You think? I don't know. Another quarterback hoping to play today, Brooke Behringer, number 18, and I saw him warming up a minute ago. Maybe we'll see him. Yeah, maybe they still would like to ridge. Well, they, they, Frazier. yeah, I know they would like to, but whether mm -hmm. they'll be able to or not. I mean, if he's a player that uh, may be called upon later in the season and has those outstanding uh, abilities, you've got to, you've got to think about playing him now. That was the intent until Velen went down with the injury. Hughes signaling for the fair catch and lets it drop. It's about the same result either way. It had it at the 10 or the 8. And Utah downs it at the 8-yard line. So we'll step aside with 7.28 to go. And this crowd will get its wish. They will see Tommy Frazier when we come back. The freshman Tommy Frazier in a quarterback now for Nebraska. And the give is to Corey Schlesinger, and Schlesinger bowls his way forward across the 15 to the 17-yard line. Tommy Frazier, an outstanding quarterback out of Florida. Six-footer, 190, is 4'6", uh, 4'7", four four in the 40. Big, strong player, can run it or throw it. Comes out of a great high school program. Second USA Today first team quarterback that Tom Osborne has signed in the last five years. Of course, Mickey Joseph out of Louisiana, the other. Well, that's the answer to the question. Will they redshirt him? As he's playing now. That just shy of the first down chains by Schlesinger. Second down. And that's second and inches. And chance for Frazier to, if they want to to do something. Well, here. Tom Osborne and the staff, they they will redshirt 75 to 85 percent of their players. Believe that they need the physical and more than that, the emotional stability, the maturity. But boy, you recruit a player this hard, it's hard to redshirt them. Hold there, right there. Although Nebraska is the one place. They have so many fifth-year quarterbacks. You look at Godowski. You look last year at Keith and McCann. Mm -hmm. The eighth penalty against Nebraska. Let's go down to Bill Dolman. 
David, David Dean, one of the biggest upsets of the 1992 season occurred back in February, and that was when Tommy Frazier signed a national letter of intent to play football at Nebraska. Many of the recruiting analysts across the country had him going to Notre Dame or Clemson. He shocked everybody when he signed with Nebraska. Well, they signed a slew of good young quarterbacks here with the Huskers. I think the, the theory was by a lot that uh, maybe a chance to play right away with the Huskers, with their quarterback situation up for grabs a little bit. Well, it would be, uh, you could go in and sell a, a young high school player on that notion because uh, no one was solidly entrenched there. Dead ball, ball start, offense, still second down. The ninth penalty against the Huskers. But it is hard, Dave. I don't care how good a player you are. This, this kid, 15, is as good a high school player as come out in a long yeah. time, but it is so hard to go from that level to this level. Mm. Players are bigger, stronger, What's faster. About it? The, the game's so much faster. Mm. Uh, everyone in practice plays at 100%. I mean, everything is full out. In high school, you only think you're going 100%. Probably going about seven. You don't have 11 good players facing you no. uh, in high school like you do here in college. Frazier, his first pass as a Husker is almost picked off. Truman Bell was the intended receiver, and that was deflected away. Nice motion, strong arm. Do you remember your first pass at OU? Yeah, sure do. There were only two. <laughs> <laughs> sure do. And was it complete? Well, it was. It, yes, it was. More on that in the moment. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> Misdirection. Yeah, misdirection, meaning he went the wrong direction. There's, a, there's the freshman mistake. Uh, it's, a, it's a different game. It is uh, so hard to, to be able to handle all the pressure and the, to absorb all of the information. I think that's the toughest thing. The physical part's not hard for Tommy Frazier or for any mature freshman that, that uh, has these types of skills. It's the mental part of it, the meetings, and absorbing all of the information. That's the, they went that away play. Yeah. Stiggy on to punt again. And Sean Williams back deep to get it for the Utes. Six minutes to go on this one. Stiggy with an end over end punt. Williams, they didn't go anywhere. Right at midfield. Lance Gray was right there to stop him. I look at freshmen that have played around the country at quarterback, and the, the obvious one to me is Cale Gundy. Yes. Uh, because he has come on to be such a, an outstanding talent. He was a fine player as a freshman, but there's no comparison to him as a freshman and him right now. I mean, it's a totally different player. It's interesting to hear the, the freshmen come in, and, oh, I can play right away, I can do this and I can do that, because they're so used to having great success in right. high school. And then once they get in there in that battle, and they realize maybe I'm yeah. not as good as I thought. And Osborne right now doing some coaching with Frazier on that sideline. Williams, we're about four or five. Utah with only one timeout remaining, so they can't stop the clock. But just that one time, except for going out of bounds and penalties and such. And Nebraska will start the year 1-0 and next week. It's Middle Tennessee State. And Dean, one of the first things that the folks here told us when we arrived in Lincoln was, what, Middle T Tennessee State, they got a team. They really got a team. <laughs> we kind of chuckled. No, they really do. They really, you know, we're, we're not taking them for granted. <laughs> Good pull there for Williams. Hey, hats off to Utah here in the yep. second half, though. I mean, uh, they have played hard. They've played well. And... At a time when it would have been easy to hang it up, your best players out of the ball game and out for who knows how long, down 35 nothing uh, in enemy territory. It had been easy to fold the tent and go home 70 to nothing, but mm -hmm. it has not been that way here in the second. And their big game next week against Utah State. First and 10 from the 32. Dolce, pass completed to Hooks. Hooks stays on his feet down to the 25-yard line. 
Williams has gone over 100 yards rushing for the Utes. He has 101 yards rushing. Last year, Keith Williams had five 100-yard rushing games. And Hooks has made some nice catches here for Utah. Clock rolls with 4.20 to go. Linebackers have been in the gaps all day long. As a quarterback, it just it bugs you to death. As much as you like to think your guards are going to pick him up, you're still scared. Jones. Jones on his feet into the end zone. Touchdown. Jones scores from 25 yards out. And Utah with their third touchdown of the second half. Jones finds a little hole and makes the most of it. Scoots in, zips to the outside, uses good speed, and uh, all of a sudden it's a three-touchdown game for Utah. They have three on the board. They will be behind 20. I guess they will go for the two, but uh, it is certainly respectable. Mm -hmm. That's right at that spread. And they are going for the two. Abrams in motion. Here comes Jones into the end zone for the two-point conversion. And Utah pulls to within 27. Keep 4 in mind, to go. Nebraska's played a ton of folks, and especially defensively. We've seen a lot of uh, third-line players. They're uh -huh. quality players, but still, you're looking at a lot of, of players that are number three on the depth chart. Fine run here, though. Well, that was a nice run. A 25-yarder from Pierre Jones. Jones has come on here in the second half with seven rushes for 37 yards. That's a new, that's, new that's sign, a new one, isn't yeah. it? That, that looks like Australian rules football. <laughs> yeah. That little sign they show. I think it's a sign <laughs> for a two-point conversion, yeah. <laughs> he scores there. Two. Yep, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> not, a, not a touchdown, not huh. six, but Let's two. See. Let's see if that catches on nationwide now. We're going to take a quick break with 4.02 to go. I, I'm, I'm with you. 49-22, Huskers. Nebraska with a 49-22 lead over Utah. We just watched Pierre Jones score a touchdown and give an unusual signal, and we've been given some inside information now. That was the Omega Phi Psi sign. You may have seen Eric B. Enemy pull that off. Omega Phi Psi's. Across the country are happy. Mark Arndt from the University of Nebraska passes that information along. Thank you, Mark. Mark, one of our spotters up here in the booth. Ah, you got it all covered, don't along we? Along with uh, Dave Lutz <laughs> and Keith Mann, our statistician. We thank them very much for their help up here today. Tyrone Hughes. Hughes looking for a big run back. Backs into the 30-yard line. All right, let's see the sign. Uh, we we want to get the, what is it, the phi what? <laughs> it's the Omega Phi oh, Psi. Uh, okay, there it is. Don't you remember seeing the enemy do that? I yeah, do recall yeah, I that do. now. I yeah. do. The Omega Phi Psi sign. All right. And there they go, near that two-minute mark. It's been the average touchdown drive of the day. It's about two minutes. Frazier still in at quarterback, the freshman. Guiding the attack, looking to run, and does. Frazier puts his head down across the 40 to the 42-yard line. And that's what you want to try to do. You want to try to get Frazier on the corner, get a lead block where he gets on the corner and hopefully can carry the ball or have to make the decision to pitch. And that's where he can excel. That's an environment in which it's a little bit easier. And now another new quarterback in, Brooke Berenger. They're playing them all now. Three twenty-four, clock moving in the ball game. We're gonna pick a player of the game, Dean. Let me give you some candidates. Uh, Mike Grant, Mike certainly Grant. a candidate. I think Derek Brown over 100 yards. Calvin Jones. I hear, I hear 82 yards rushing. I hear linemen across America saying, but uh, guys, what about the people up front? John Reese had a good ball game in the secondary. Yeah. I think pressure was clearly on the shoulders, though, of Mike Grant coming in, and uh, it was his job to 
to win or lose. He has it handed to him. If he doesn't have a good day today, which uh, was a guarantee that he was going to have, then he could easily lose that job, and Tom Osborne looks elsewhere quickly. Mm -hmm. He won't be looking elsewhere right now. It, it is still Grant's job. Yeah, Grant came in with all the pressure really on him. All the talk in the preseason was like big question marks for a quarterback. And Grant came in and played a solid game. Had that one interception, but other than that, pretty solid game. And Barringer eats it at the 47-yard line. 2.20 to go. Nebraska jumped in front 42-0. And they've just kind of held on since then. And here's another option play from Nebraska. And the objective here, pitch right there, and you have a chance for success. It's a lot easier said than done. And uh, Behringer hasn't done it much and takes the loss. And Stiggy with yet another punt. A rare heavy punt day from Mike Stiggy. Yeah, especially after a 35 nothing start. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he didn't think the leg would be needed this much. Sean Williams to boot it, to, to try to go get it. Stiggy boots this one. It's going to bounce around, and one of those guys in red shirts falls on it at the 12. It's a good kick away from Williams where he couldn't field it cleanly <clears throat> and down it inside the 20. So Utah will have it one last time. And Dolce comes out again. I'm a little surprised that Dolce is still in there because, uh, you know, you would think that he wouldn't want to have another injury from Ron McBride after Brian Rowley maybe be out for the season with a broken ankle. Let's go down to Bill Dolman. Dave, I don't know if we've gotten a shot of it or not, but there's a revolving door over there on the Nebraska sideline. The Huskers dressed more than 120 players in the game today, and more than 30 of them have duplicate numbers. So I hope you guys are prepared for all that. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're, we're, I'll tell you what, right now we're searching through the media guides to figure out half of these guys. Hey, right we here. got a Nebraska guy up here that tells us about these Fisai signs. We yeah. can sure peg out who these guys are. We got it made. <laughs> Abrams. Stays on the ground, gets it up to near the 20-yard line. Mercifully, the clock nearing one minute. Now look at this. Look how young Does there. he count? I'm not sure. He says, come on, coach, put me in. Put me in. They're both of them. Both that, of them back there going, come on, get me in there. That's not John Perella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the before and after picture. <laughs> <laughs> Williams. That carries up the 20 work. Work. Yeah. <laughs> Now they'll stop the clock to move the chains. John McMillan making the stop on Williams. Skyriders came through here with most people projecting Colorado as the preseason number one in the Big Eight, Nebraska two, Oklahoma three, Kansas four. But the Skyriders came through and they flip-flopped it. They say the Huskers will win the title. And they had Colorado two, Oklahoma three. I think what's exciting on the reverse. Here comes Hooks. From room to run, and it just kind of falls over at the 33. I think the thing that's exciting is certainly Colorado, Nebraska, Oklahoma with a great shot to win the Big A title. And Kansas, you can't forget about the Jayhawks. I think they also have a shot. I'm, I'm not saying they should be favored, but I think they've got a shot at doing something this year. They definitely have a shot. I think it'll be a wide open race. I think the, what Oklahoma's doing throwing the ball really makes it interesting. And Colorado, who's won it the last few years, they're changing up so much. They have a ton of talent up there, yet they're changed. They're needing to find a quarterback, right. and they're throwing the ball. So, I mean, what do you have there? It's hard to really project. Nebraska's the team that you can pretty much bank on just being a solid team. They're going to be there, but how good does Grant become? I, that probably is their upside, and Kansas is a team with a break or two uh, could be there as well. And Dean, another question mark in the Big 8 is Kansas State. Can they stay at the level they were at a year ago when they really surprised so many? I would think so, because now they're able to recruit some better players. Mm -hmm. uh, Snyder's done just an outstanding job there. Job. Yeah, and uh, coach of the year a couple of years in yep. a row. And um, he's done it with not as much talent, but after having a couple good years, now he's able to bring in more talent. So I would think yes. Pressure on Bob Stahl at Missouri to produce this year. No question at all. Got to win and uh, got to win quickly up there. And 
not a lot of talent. And our friend Pat Jones has brought in a ton of junior college talent. 0-10-1, oh, the Pokes were a year ago. They bring in 40 new players. That includes signees from high school, junior college transfers, and some walk-ons. So just a totally new team there. And then you have Iowa State. And Jim Walden, yeah, he thinks he's got the numbers this year. So it should be a great race. We're looking forward to an entire season of Big 8 football as the clock winds down here. And that will do it. The Nebraska Cornhuskers win their first game impressively of 1992. Tom Osborne chalks up career win number 187. And the Nebraska Cornhuskers dominate the Utes of Utah. The final score here, 49 to 22. It was 42 nothing at one point. And the bad news for the Utes, not so much the loss here today, but the loss, more importantly, of their leading wide receiver, Brian Rowley, with the broken ankle. So Osborne with a stern look, but another W in that column. And the Nebraska Cornhuskers win it easily, 49-22. to 22. And, Dean, there's been a lot of talk about the quarterback situation. Mike Grant did a very good job here today. Derek Brown and Calvin Jones, they did what was advertised. And they certainly did a, a good job as well. And let's quickly go down on the field to Bill Dolman, who's with Tom Osborne. Coach, 49-22, your impressions of your team in the game opener. Well, I thought our first offense and first defense played well. We Obviously, we don't have second units ready to go right now. And uh, I was really surprised at how easy it was early in the game. I thought that our defense played tremendous uh, football the first first half and maybe part of the third quarter. I uh, don't think we got anybody hurt bad today. We got a few guys banged up, so that was good. Got experience to quite a few players. A lot of guys were nervous. I don't know why. <laughs> but anyway, we played okay. And, Got by it. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Best of luck. Back to you, Dave. Thanks a lot, Bill. We'll be back in just a moment to put the final wraps on this one. The Nebraska Cornhuskers for the seventh straight year win the opener.